close the doors of your mind from all carnal will, all carnal thought, all emotions, all desires, all fears, all consciousness within yourself that's full of laziness and doubt and anger and resentment and bitterness and hatred and strife and complaining and criticism and pride and all fornication and all idols that one may have lodged within themselves. And bring them under subjection to the highest order, to Yahushua Mashiach, and bring them under your feet. And allow your mind to come to balance within yourself, within your cranial nerves, within your hands and your feet, and your thoughts and your consciousness. For today is a day of freedom. Today is a day of warning. Today is a day that Yahuwah has given to us as a day of remembrance to understand why Yahushua Mashiach came, died, and ascended past all Allahims and all gods on the earth. The one who gives life and understanding, Yahuwah Allahim sent his Ben from the highest Shamayim to give us life and understanding, even as he did in the beginning, to give life to the earth, to give or light frequency to the earth and allow every single plant, every single herb yielding seed to form and all of the horror and the horror of the earth, all the rivers and streams, and they all serve us and he created it all for us that we may understand and be without excuse that he exists in the highest Shamayim, even the beings in the Rakia and the firmament, and all of the Kuka beam in the Yark and the Shamash must acknowledge the one who sits in the highest Shamayim, even those under the earth, in the underworld, even the under surface of the earth, even under the earth, even all the way down to Sheol, even down to the, to the, to the actual realms of Hades himself. Yahuwah Allahim, the one who gives and takes away, the one who rules, the one who wounds, who kills and makes alive, the one who sends the flying comets through the air, the one who sends the meteorites that crash, the one who allows light and or light frequency to, to resonate, the one who causes all eclipses and all fa fabric and firmaments to shake, and also the earth, Yahuwah Allahim. So this yum, this day, as we move forward, we move forward in the fear of Yahuwah, in, the, in his fear. Right, this is Nazarene Acts of the Shalakim, suggestions of the old serpent. Above all, therefore, you ought to understand the deception of the old serpent and his cunning suggestions who deceive you as it were by prudence. So you look at his suggestions. Like he said, this all comes in your mind, in your consciousness, in your thoughts, in the four corners of your mind, in the, in the four corners of your body, from your hands to your feet, to your shoulders, to your hips, to your lower back, to your eyes, to your ears, to your mouth, to your, to your gates, to your, to your seven gates to your nine gates. He resonates in all of these areas of your body. He's old too, he's an ancient serpent. Are right? you saying he's more, he's a, he's a frequency energy. And he can, he can fix his mind on your, your neck and your back and your mind and he can, he can attach himself to you and put all types of things in your mind and all types of doubts, even about your salvation, your salvation itself. And this cunning suggestion of who deceives you as it were by prudence, he's very prudent in it, right? He's very prudent. And as by sort of reason creeps through your senses and deceiving you a great gain, just like people looking for gains today. But he, he's trying to deceive you. He's trying to deceive your thoughts. He's trying to nasha you, just like he did Kua in the garden. He's trying to nasha you, just like, just like he does men and women, male and female today. And it says right here, by sort of reason creeps through your senses and, and deceiving you a great gain. Therefore, he initiates in your mind opinions of Allahim for whatsoever kinds. Only that your sins become his comfort. So your sins, your idol worship, anything you hold within your heart, bitterness, hatred, envy, resentment, he's going to use that. He's going to use that as fuel to keep himself alive inside of you. The same way a parasite or disease uses your body as a host. Right? For he, for his immorality was condemned from the beginning to eat dust. Right? He was condemned to eat the, red, eat the clay, eat the red adama, eat the dust of the earth. For that he caused to be again resolved into the dust, him who had, who, who had been taken from the dust. So you look at Adam, he was formed from the Adam, the virgin land, the virgin soil. He was formed a virgin. He was formed all in the cleanness and pureness of mind and pureness of thought, formed from that very Adama, and then he called that Adama to sin. He caused Adam to sin, both male and female, because Adam consists of two individual, two individual parts, both male and female, mother and father, son and daughter. It says, even until the time when he, your beings will be restored, being brought through the fire as we will instruct you more fully at another time. We've, hey, so we talked about going through the fire many times, but there's a lot more information about it. 
just we talk about Ish and Isha bring, presenting a offering made by fire. But there's a lot more to talk about that. Right? But it says, from him, therefore, proceeds all errors and doubts. So any errors and doubts you have within yourself right now, he has it in you. He put it in your mind and he put it in your consciousness. He said, I put an error and a doubt in your mind. And he said, you can't doubt when you, when he said, when Yahuwah gives you binakukma da'at, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, you can't doubt within yourself. Because as soon as you doubt, it'll become, a, it'll become your worst enemy for you, not for anybody else but yourself. By which you are driven from amuna, which is your belief, your amuna, the utterance, Yahuwah's voice itself. You are driven from Yahuwah's voice itself. That's within yourself. Because he exists inside of you, and you allow Satan to get inside of your body, and guess what? He now is your amuna. And when Satan becomes your amuna, you'll find yourself doing a lot of things you should not do. By which you are driven from uh, um, amuna and belief in one Allahim Yahuwah. So you'll be driven from amuna, right, just from belief itself, and then you, you I say from one Allahim Yahuwah. You won't think that you'll think there's many that created the Shamayims in the earth. You'll think there's a whole bunch of them that did it. And he said, you're only supposed to have one Allahim, just like you're only supposed to have one being inside of you that governs and controls you. And if you have that, both male and female, then you'll find yourself doing good deeds all the time. You'll find yourself being loving and kind and compassionate all the time. You'll find yourself being full of righteousness and, and simcha all the time. Why? Because it's a continual ruach. Right? But just like he says, proceeds all errors and doubts. This is Eub, Eub, Job, Eub, 38, 12 through 32. Have you commanded the morning since it, your days began? Right? So you look at when the time you've been born, from the time you came out of your mother's matrix until now, out of the portal gate into this world, how many mornings did you see? He said, did you do that? No, you came into an auto-generated world, and he was already doing it before you came out of the womb. Have you commanded the morning since the day your days began and caused the dawn to know its place? Right, the sun, you're ready to go down now. Do you, he said, have you caused the dawn to know its place? Have you caused it to go through the portal? That it might not take hold of, your, of the skirts of the earth and the wicked be shaken out of it? It says, verse 14, it says, it, it says, it is changed like clay under seal and its features stand out like a garment. From the wicked, their light is withheld, withheld and their up and their up of the arm is broken. Can you establish their rule on earth? Have you entered into the springs of the sea or walked in the recesses of the deep? Have you went down to the deepest parts of the ocean? Of the young of the world? No. Have you have the gates of the of death been revealed to you? Or have you seen the gates of deep darkness? Have you seen that? The gates that actually hold it together? Have, have you comprehended the expanse of the Shamaims? Declare if you know all of this. I'm talking about the whole measurements of it, the whole expanse of the Shamaims. Right? There's more than one. There's Shabai Shamaim. There's seven heavens. He said, Do you know it? He said, Even the expanse of the earth. Right? Have you comprehended the expanse of the earth? Declares it. Declare if you know it. That's verse 18. Verse 19. Where is the way of the dwelling of the light? And where is the place of darkness? That you may take it to its territory, that you may discern the paths to its home. Can you take light where it needs to go and darkness? That's beyond comprehension, that's beyond enlightenment. Verse 24, you know for you, you know for you were then born then, that the number of your days is great. Have you entered into the storehouses of snow? Or have you seen the storehouses of hail, which I have reserved for the time of trouble, for the day of battle and war? See, Yahuwah don't use natural things that we use. He used snow, he used the thing he created, and hail, and rocks. That's why he used big white, white rocks that weigh like two, three pounds. He used stone, how you say, hard snow. That's what he uses. And he, and he throw it on you, and throw it on your house, or on your car, on you. It, it, that's, how, that's how he fights. People saying, oh, oh I, they're gonna use, Yahuwah uses it, other weapons, yes he does. But when, he, when you know when he's coming, he's gonna use his creation to beat you. Verse 23, which I have reserved for the time of trouble and the day of battle. What is the way of the place of the light? He said, what is the place where the light is disturbed or where the east wind is scattered upon the earth? He said, where's the east wind? He said, who has cleft a channel for the torrents of the rain and a way for the thunderbolt? Who did that? To bring rain on the land where no man is, on the desert in which 
there is no man to satisfy the waste and desolate, desolate land and to make the ground sprout with grass. Has the rain a father? So human beings, we can't do this. We can't operate in this type of way. We can't even, we can't even transform our consciousness into that type of being without him being inside of you. You can't even do it. It says, or who has begotten the drops of the dew? From whom, for whose wound did the ice come for? And who have given birth to the frost of Shamaim? So he's going through the whole list of everything he done. Like you go through a resume and you show yourself on a, on a trying to get a job application and he's like, okay, look at here. Look at what I do. Look at all the stuff I've done. He's like, you're hired? Are you hired to do this? You gonna do all this? You gonna manage all this? He says, For who, from whose womb did ice come forth? And who has given birth to the frost of Shamayim? So now you see people who are higher enlightenment, who are going to sit on 12 thrones, sit on th certain thrones, and people who don't. Verse 30 says, the water became, he says, the waters became hard like stone, and the face of the deep is frozen. Verse 31 says, can you bind the chains of the Pleiades? Can you do that? Can you bind the, the chains of the seven stars, the, the Shabai Kuka, the Pleiades, or loose the cores of Orion, Oranos? Can you do that? Can you even touch the stars? The key mother kid said. Can you lead forth Maseroth in their season? Can you do that? The constellations? Or can you guide the bear with his children? Can you do that? Do you know the ordinances of Shamayims? Yahushua said, you can discern the face of the sky, but you can't discern the signs of the times. Most people can't even discern the face of the sky. They can't even discern that. So how do you, see, Husha said, you can do that, but you can't discern the signs of the times. So you're telling me, you're going to be able to discern the signs of the times? But he said, do you know the ordinances of the Shamaims? Right, because they all move according to the celestial circles, right? Verse 31 says, can you bind the chains, right? That word for chains is Adonai. It means to bond, to band, is the bands, the influence. Can you bind the influences? The influences of these stars. Can you do that? Can you do that? Can you bond the influences of the Pleiades, the Kima? That's the Pleiades, the Kima, the constellation of the seven stars, a cluster of stars, the Pleiades, the Pleiadian, they call it, some people call it a Pleiadian empire. But we know the seven stars, we look at the seven stars, the seven, seven stars that exist in a cluster. So you have a star clusters and you have binary stars. Binary stars join together and they rotate around each other. You have star clusters, right? When all, a whole bunch of stars get together, it's called the star clusters, right? But then you see this seven stars. Even the book of Kazun says, he that holds the seven stars in his hand, right? We look at all these attributes, but he said, can you find the, can you unknown the key? Can you do that? Right, so you look at the seven stars, you look at the kuka beam, you look at all the, the celestial circles, Right, you see the lesser lights and the greater lights, right? These are the lesser lights and the greater lights, right? One star shines brighter than another star. These are lesser lights, higher frequency lights and lower frequency lights. He said, can you, can you bind the influences of the Pleiades, of the Kima? Right, so you look at all these, right? And of course, you know, look at the Kima, right? It exists in a tar, it says in Taurus. Right, so you look at Atlas, the Atlas star appears in the springtime. Like when you look when you look at all the stars aligned, you'll see the Atlas, you see the Taurus star system above all of the, of the alignment, what they call the luminaries, the planets. And it exists above it, right above it, above all the seven stars. The seven stars exist above all of that. It did, right? But it said right here. You see all these names, Electra, you see all these in the earth. Maya, they even have movies named after them. Astro, they even have movies named after these people. Kalino, Tegeta, Pleon. Amazingly, you see right here, Astero, right? What do they call it? Astereo? Astereo? Right? You, and you look at all this. It says there's these Pleiades. He said, who can bind the influences of the Pleiades? Who can? Can you do it? Right, look at, look at the Pleiades, stars in the Pleiades. 
Or you, you get Astro Marok, Tagit, but you got the Atlas Star. But notice what they call them, right? You see right here, they call it, where is it? You can see it right here. Where does it say that? Right, you got Pleon, then you have, it says who, the, uh, the triple system under the Atlas star. Then you have the, what it says, the, the blue white subgiant right here, right here. You see that? It says blue white subgiant. Right, this is another subgiant, the Electra star system, Electra. Like all these are all part of the seven stars, like what they called it and when they gave names to them. Like when people start giving names to these star clusters, then they become a part of the, their vocabulary, right? But these are just Shaba'i Kuka, but man began to give star names to them. That's why you look at people having names on the earth at the stars, right? You got the Her star system, you got, you got the Peg star system and the Pegasus galaxy. Like all these are a part of people's names on earth and people have these names as above, so below. People have these names, right? Some people are named after these stars, right? right? But he said right here, can you bind the chains of the Pleiades or loose, right? That word for loose is pathak. It means to open. Can you uh, open, it says loosen or to open, deprive, right? To, in, to carve, but it means talking about can you loose? Can you take something apart? Can you loose, loose what? That word for chords, can you loose the chords? It means, it's masaka. It means what? Chord, bands, something drawing. Chord. All this is important. This is very important, right? To understand about Kima Kitsil and all these things. Why? Because it's very important. Something drawing. Why? Can you loose the chord? So you look at a chord, it also means a belt. Like you talk about a belt. Can you loose the belt or the chord? Can you lose the cord of the Ketzil, the Orion? Can you lose the cord of the constellation Orion, or Oranos, right, in Greek? But it's the constellation Orion, and that's Ketzil. Can you lose them cords? Can you break it? Because during the seasons, the cord, the, the literally Orion's belt literally breaks apart and it comes back. It literally, the middle star breaks apart, comes out, and comes back. He said, can you do that? Yahuwah like, can you do it? He's like, no, I can't. We can't do that, right? So you look at Orion, right? They called it Greek mythology, which you know it ain't a myth, but they call it a mythology, but it says it was a giant huntsman. It was a giant, just like we just saw giant dwarfs in the stars over here. We saw giants in the Pleiadian star system. They say, they say it's a giant huntsman, a huntsman, a person who hunts, a huntsman whom Zeus or perhaps Artemis placed among the stars as the constellation of Orion. So just like any other thing, you see a, per, a human being on earth get, that gets crowned and gets himself placed among the stars. You hear people say that too. I'm gonna place you among the stars. But all that's a part of it. He said, Orion, can you lose the cause of Orion? Can you lose the cause of Orion? Right, so you look at Orion, what do you see? You see this word right here, regal. That word, you see that word. Look where the, look where the, look where the regal at. At the feet, you see Regal at, at the feet of the cars, at the feet of the this constellation of Orion. And then he called him the mighty huntsman. He, he's a not, he's a huntsman. And then you got right here, you got Mintaka, right? There's a there's there's actual temples named after this, right? And you got Antonak, right? All these are part part of it. You got up here, what's that? <laughs> Misa, that's what they call it, Misa. And then you got Bel Belarex. What they call right here, Belarex, right? It says beetle, ge beetle geese, <laughs> the tail geese, but he said beetle, beetle geese. <laughs> Sound like beetle juice. Right? People saying, where beetle juice come from? They'd be like, beetle juice, beetle juice, what do you think they'd be saying? Right, all right here, then you got right here, right here, you got Orion's belt. They say, can you loose the cord of Orion? Because you know the, the middle part of a human being, you injure that, it can mess up the feet, the hands, and the shoulders. And notice what he has on this, he has it, they have it with a bow and arrow. Because he's a mighty huntsman. 
That's why they call the Greeks call them a mighty hunter. Because hunting and gathering is the, was the, the actual trait. When Yahuwah made Adam and Kahua, he made them to eat, eat plants and vegetables. But then men to began to be hunters, hunters, which means they left Yahuwah and then they started to what? Worship the stars. So being that they started worshiping the stars and started worshiping Yahuwah and following his commands, then they became hunters and they started killing animals. That's what happens. They, they, they left Yahuwah and started killing animals. And you know what happens when you start killing animals? You're going to find out. And it says right here, and it's Saif. Right? And it's at his feet. But notice that these words are at their feet. But it says he's a mighty hunter. Right? So you got the, this, the, 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 what they call a Mayan calendar or the Mexican calendar. He said, why, why, why are you doing this again? Because it's important. Right? You see these three, three, four little corners? That's the stars at the shoulders and the feet. At the shoulders and the feet of the Orion constellation. Then, right, because you know that goes there. But then you got these three, these three circles, right? You got the one big circle in the middle, and you got these small ones on the side. That's Orion's belt. That's Orion's belt. Because you look at all of the constellations, you look at the movement patterns of the, of the, of the cosmos, and then you start to see what? You start seeing the, the cycles of the seasons on the clock, just like you have a clock that a watch that you, you have in your possession, right? Just like you see the, these little six hour, well, you got, well, most of them don't call this these six hour hands, but right when the sun rises out, rises out of here, it goes towards the horizon, and then it comes back down. It's the same thing, but just in another form, right? And during these, during these, during these cycles, there are eclipses, and, the, and they were very good. They, they worship Quetzal, they worship Chop. The rain god, Quetzal, the serpent god, the bird serpent man, and then they worship Ekbalam. This is a Balam was a female wizard, a sorceress. They built pyramids to these people. Amazingly, these same people are worshipped today. Because they worship the stars. And they all based on Orion's belt. They say Oranos. And they all worship these beings in the in the, in the, in the constellation. And they just forgot about Yahuwah. And by forgetting him, one now worships other gods. Right, which one doesn't need to have? He said, "Why are you talking about?" Because this is these are the things that people need to understand. Just like just like you look at eclipses, the Mayans had certain sacrifices they had during the eclipse time. Why? Because they would offer to their gods, and by offering to their gods, they would do it before the eclipse. That's what they would do, and then when they already knew the eclipse was going to happen, and they would do the sacrifice before the eclipse. And then once the eclipse is over, what happens? They'd be like, the gods are pleased. The moon gods are pleased, right? And that's how they operate it, right? So you look at Orion, Orano, or is that Orion's belt? Orion the hunter, that's what they call him. Orion the mighty hunter, right? He was, he's a mighty hunter, right? A mighty hunter, right? That's why they have these, you notice he got a staff in his hand. Right, because you know these are three, they, they call it the three pyramids of Orion, Orino, Orino, or the key, Kitsil, or the Kima, Kitsil. And guess what? On his belt, he has the three stars. And he's like a, a mighty warrior. Right? And, he, and you start seeing this big star, that's a serious star. But then you start to see all these things right here. All these are a part of Orion's belt. Orion's belt. But all these are a part of it. Right? But then when you look at all these all these all these beings and all these things, they left these Yahuwah to be a part of the family of Orion. Right? But then all these gods began to get worship on the planet. Right? You see the Greek god, the mighty hunter. But you say, why are we calling the hunter? The mighty hunter, right? So you look at Sa, is it was the god of ancient Mizraim religion. Sa. It means representing a constellation that encompasses the stars of Orion and Lepus, as well as the stars found in some neighboring modern constellations. Saul was the father of gods. That's what, he, that's what they, they call him, the father of gods, which, is, which was personification of modern Orion and Lepus constellation. Orion is a prominent set of stars visible during winter. When you go down here, what, is it, what do you see? It says, it is named a hunter. 
in Greek, the Mahdi hunter. What did the Mexican Mayans people have? They, they were hunters and gatherers. What, what were the, what did, what did the uh, Mizraim do? Hunters and gatherers. What did Cush's family do? They were all hunters. They worshiped Orion. They worshiped the stars. They worshiped the cuckoo beam in the yard. They worshiped these beings. And they became Mahdi hunters. And he was, and you start seeing the hunters and gatherers. They say in Greek mythology, right? But that's what they say. Orion is the most prominent during winter, even in the northern hemisphere. So you look at the northern hemisphere that exists outside of the, in the northern parts. And then you start to see them exalting themselves above the northern hemisphere of the north. Even Ezekiel, your cousin, y'all told in 47, he said, they're going, he said, I'm going to exalt my throne above the stars in the size of the north. In the Yeshayahu chapter 14. I believe it is. He said, how do I follow Haliyah? Right, he's going to exalt himself above the stars in the size of the north. What gates in the side of the north? You know Yehuda's in the side of the north. Right, he said, I'm going to exalt my stars, myself above the stars. But it said, in the winter hexagonal. Right? So he said, can you lead forth Maseroth? Can you lead forth the 12 constellations? Yehuda can lead forth the constellations. He can break the bands of Orion. He can loose, he can, he can, he can loose the cords of Orion. Or the, the kids seal. And he can break the bands the influences of Pleiades. He can do all of that. He said, can you, can you what? Can you lead forth Maseru? Yahuwah, like, I can do that. He's talking about the 12 constellations or the 12 zodiac signs. Can you, can you lead the, can you do that? Can you lead the constellations? Can you move them in the sky? Can you move them around and make them in a certain way? Right, so, so you look at the 12 zodiacs, right? Because you know, the word zodiac come from Greek, which means a circle of small animals. That's all it is, a circle of small animals. As almost a constellation of the zodiac. That's all it is, right? And because we know these terms are Greek. They come from one of the sons of Nuach. It comes from one of the sons of Nuach. And Yahuwah made them. Yahuwah made the language. But it says in astronomy, the zodiac is the name of the celestial zone around the ecliptic and the trajectory of the sun across the sky as seen from the earth. Although the sun actually passes 13 constellations in the Western astrology, there are 12 zodiac signs of zodiac. So what are the 12 signs, right? So because people say, oh, Taurus, we just talked about the Taurus. That was the Atlas star. That's the Pleiadian star system, the seven stars. It's the seven stars, the Pleiadian star system. He said, why are they sitting? Why are they everybody got them above all everything? And that's the Pleiadian stars. And he said the seven stars. And you got Aries, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces. And you know what? And you got Yehuda, Yoruban, God, Esher, Naphtali, Manasseh, Shamun, Louis, Leitzakar, Zabalun, Yusuf, and Binyamin. What? He said, why you got Yehuda right next to Taurus? Because Taurus is where the seven stars are. They're the seven stars. How you say the Shabai Kuka? They're above the seven. They're above all. They were. They're above all in the, in the first month. In the first month, when everything aligns, and you look above everything, you'll see Taurus, and you'll see the seven stars. In the first month, on the first day of the month, right? It's important though. But you see, he called in Greek they call it the the circle of animals, right? Walking in the circles. So right? you see all the animals on this on the actual constellation movements, they all move in a procession around in the sky in a procession in a circle around the sun. And around the moon. They move around it in a circle. While the Yarak and the Shamash is in the middle. And they move in a circle. They move in procession. They move in a circle. It's all a part of it. He said, "Why? What is the constellation that be moving in a circle? Twelve constellations, twelve tribes moving in a circle. What? What does all that have to do with anything? They surrounding another sphere, of the Iraq and the sun. Are you talking about the the Yad, the mother and the father? The twelve, the twelve sun, the twelve son, twelve sons are surrounding the mother and the father." They're surrounding the mother and the father. Right? So you, and when you look at the actual constellations, if, 
if you've ever read a start, looked at a star map, they, they move in a circle. They move in a circle. They move in a circle. Just like animals. That's why they call them, the, that's what the Greeks call them, the circle of animals. Because for some reason, the animal move in a circle. For some reason, they do this. He said, why does sheep move in a circle? Or say, or saws, how do you say? Sa, because remember, sa in, in, in uh, Egyptian, Mizraim culture, Ham's, Ham's culture is the father of gods. But for some reason, notice how they're moving in a circle. He said, the, the animal's moving in a circle. He's like, yeah, the animal's moving in a circle. Right, so you look at the 12 tribes of the 12 zodiacs. Right, you look at the 12 zodiacs, then you have Leah, Zilpah, Bilka, and Rakal. Right, but we know Leah is hatred, Zilpah is robberies, Bilka is robber, robberies, and Rakal is idols. They are all idols. These are all works of the flesh. How you say? These are the works of the flesh. Robberies. He said, put away all hatred and lying from your mouth. Notice all that's in the, in the actual encompassing of all of that. And put away your idols. He said, make sure you don't worship no idols. Notice all that. And then they got 12 sons. 12 sons. And if you had them in the circle, there'll be the 12 zodiacs traveling around in the circle with the sun and the moon in the middle. And then you got, how you say, your code, your code right here as the leader, as the one who shines by day, and the Iraq by night. Mim shala, ma'or mim shala, ma'or mim shala. Late night, greater light, lesser light. Right, and, and we look at the moon, the moon has, me, he says, the moon has full moon, you got first quarter, new, no moon, then you have last quarter. 
And in between, they got the waxing and warning. But those just those just the the actual transition time, transition to the moon. And notice, you look at these four four first quarter new, new moon, last quarter full moon. That's that's the same thing when you see your coats wives, four of them. But they all one one bride. His twelve kukabin or his twelve sons, his four moon transitions, which are his one moon and then him. It's all one. It's all a part of one system, one symmetric, synchronized system that hasn't changed, right? So look at the sun. It's a solar eclipse occurs when the moon passes between the sun and the earth. So you can really see a solar eclipse now. And, that, and people are saying, what is the significance of that? I said the whole world, I said they are on high alert for it. And you're going to find out, right? He says, and the solar eclipse occurs when the moon passes between the sun and the earth. Why? It's right in between the sun and the earth casting a moon shadow on the earth and a solar eclipse can only happen during the new moon when there's no moon the moon orbits is titled five degrees to the earth's orbit around the sun and it sits right in the middle that's the only time it happens that's the only time it happens right and he says can you can you guide the great bear with her children so you got a bear bear cubs that word for that word for great bear is Aish. Can you grab? Can you can you lead the Aish and his children? Can you grab the bear cubs and their children too as well? Can you lead them on? Naturally, can you do that? He said, "I can do it with the kuka bean, the stars. I can do it with the stars and the shamayim. I can lead a bear and her cubs and the little baby bears." Now he said, "The lesser light, the greater lights, and the lesser lights. I can lead Arcturus. Why? I can lead Arcturus. I can lead the." He said, they got things called, we got a corona. You got a corona? <laughs> they be like, what that is? He said, I can leave Karua or boots. You got some boots on? Right? It says right here, coma. He said, you got canes. Right? All these are a part of the stars. And you got a whirlpool galaxy, right? <laughs> and you got things in your house called whirlpool. You got M3. You got you got music group sound by M3. But it says, can you lead the the Great Bear, the Octors? Can you do that? The Aish, right? Can you can you lead the Great Bear? Because all the stars they trace into a bear, just like you trace with a ba trace with a, a baby. You see a Great Bear. Notice what you see in the Great Bear. You see an X. That's all you see. You see an X. And amazingly, in Switzerland, in Bern, Switzerland, they use the bear as their mascot, the bear constellation. And you see an X right there, and that's where they have all the gold. They have the gold underneath their three Swiss, three banks that exist, and they're all facing in the square. That's what they say, it's underground. But they say an X. But it says right here, you got M9, you got at the top, you got a cigar, cigar galaxy. Have you ever had a cigar, a cigar before? Right, because you got a helix, helix galaxy. Right, these are all things you see while you sit in the house, walk by the way, when you lie down, you rise up. You see these things. The Keenan galaxy. Right, you got, what did that say right there? Alcon, Mizar. And you got right here, the head of it is Alcade. All this is all in the, the actual star system of. He said, can you, God, can you lead the great bear and her children and the stars that come with it? You see all those stars? Yahuwah is like, I can move it. I can move it, right? So, you know, Ursa Major, also known as the great bear, because that's what it's also called. They call it the Aish. We call it Aish, but then you start to see the great bear. It is a constellation in the northern sky associated with, it says, mythology. Notice how they keep training you with this mythology, right? Trying to make it seem like it's fake. Worshiping the stars, no. The beings in the stars, they try to make it seem like it's something that you don't need to, you don't need to worry about. It ain't got nothing to do with you. Right, and it says, dates back to prehistory. Latin names mean greater the large bear. Right, the large bear. He said, why would you call it a large bear? It's the large bear. Right, so you, it's like the, you got a, 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 the large bear and you got the what? I'm also referring to a nearby Ursa Minor, the lesser bear. So you got the great bear, 
and the lesser work bear. You got the greater light, the lesser light. You got the sun, and you got the moon. Greater light, lesser light. And you got the kukab, these are lesser light, or some, those are minor stars. You got greater and lesser, minor and major. Ursa Major, also known as the Great Bear, is the third largest constellation in the sky. It includes the Big Dipper, like they say, Asterim, a recognizable co collection of stars in the Northern Hemisphere. Right? So, go on the keys on the keyboard, on an on organ, on an acoustic guitar, 12 string, 10 string, 6 string. You got major keys, and then you got minor keys. You got F, G, right? You got C, D, E, F, G, A, B, right? You can have a minor and a major, or A, B, C, E, F, G, or A, B, C, E, F, G minor keys, but they're all a part of the same neck and or key and or thing you play, and they all give our vibrational frequency. The same way a, a big star gives our vib vibrational frequency, or a little star gives our vibrational frequency. They all do the same thing, just like a male gives us a certain vibrational frequency, or a woman gives off vibrational frequency or a person who commits sin gives us a certain vibrational frequency or a sinner or a person who is a hater of Yahuwah gives us a certain vibrational frequency, you can tell, but then you have somebody who loves him and you can see they give off a certain vibrational frequency. It all coincides to the same frequency, all the same thing. This bear sheet 126. And you all of him said, let us make Adam in our salim after our likeness, which means he's telling him, make him according to our same vibrational frequency. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, right? The, the God is he's the birds of the Shamayim, the off, and the livestock, the Bahamian, and over all the earth and every creeping thing, the Ramiz that creeps upon the earth. And Yahuwah Allah created Adam in his own image. Which means he used his, his image and he made him. In the image of Yahuwah, he created him. Male, Zakar, and female, Nakubah, he created him. He's both male and female. Yahuwah's name is Yahuwah. Did Yah. Yahoo is male. The ah is female. He's both male and female. And he made Adam both male and female. And then he says, Zakar, Wu, Nakuba. He joined them together. Wabara Alahim At Ha Adam. Basalam 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 Alahim Bara. Zakar Wu Nakuba Bara. I think he did that. He made Adam in his own image and likeness. He, he joined him with a tent peg to his isha, Zakar and Akubah. And they were all, they're one. And when they're one, they're Adam. He said, when they're one, they're Adam. And he made him in his image and likeness. Zakar and Akubah, he joined him with a tent peg. Right? And we know, he said, why, why, why did he do that? Bereshit 1, 28-31, and Allahim bar barocked them. He barocked his creation and said, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea. Have, be fruitful and multiply and subdue it and worship the fish of the sea? No. And over the birds, worship the birds? No. Of the Shamaims? And over every living thing that moves on the earth, worship that too? No. He said, Be fruitful and multiply and subdue and have dominion over it. He didn't tell you to worship because Yahuwah don't even worship his own creation. So you created Yahuwah's image, and you worship Yahuwah, you ain't creating Yahuwah's image if you worship his creation. And all Yahuwah said, Behold, I've given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of the earth for food. Face of the earth and every tree yielding seed in its fruit. You shall have them for a call, akla, for your food. That's your food for the beings who created in his image and likeness. That's what he said in the beginning. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the shaman, to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has breath, I have given every green plant for food, and it was so. I've given you every green plant. And you Elohim saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was good, very good, and mayo tell. And he gave the animals too. Notice the, notice the insectoids eat the plants. They eat the leaves. Even the birds, he said the birds of the shaman, all the beasts of the earth, they're supposed to be eating plants. He said, hey, everything that has breath on the earth. You know how I said, everything that has breath praise Yahuwah? So how everything that has breath, they praise Yahuwah if everything ain't doing what he told them? He said, I have given every green plant for food, and it was so. And you all even saw that everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning. Shishiyum. 
He said it was very good. And that's how Yahuwah made man. That's how he created them. It's Bereshit 7, Bereshit 2, 7 through 9. Then Yahuwah Elohim formed Adam from the dust of the ground, from the Adama, the red soil, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living creature. Yahuwah Elohim planted in the garden of, in Aden, in the east, and there he put Adam, whom he had formed. So he put him there in the garden. Because that's what he was created to do, to be in the garden. This is very significant. Why? And out of the ground, Yahuwah Elohim made to spring up every tree that is pleasant for the sight and good for food. Me'akal. Ma'akal. It's good for food. You know, that's what he gave Adam to eat, and therefore he put it in the garden for him to eat it. He didn't put anything in else in to eat it. He put no meat in there, no animal flesh. He didn't put that in there. It's not in there. He didn't make no steak for him to eat. He didn't make any things that were of blood and flesh to eat that he made from the, that he gave the actual plants to eat. Bereshit 2, 15 through 17. Yahuwah Elohim took the man and put him in the garden of Aden to work it, which is abide, and to shamar, to keep it. That's what he put him in there to do. And Yahuwah Elohim commanded the man saying, you, should, you may surely eat of every tree of the garden. Notice he keep talking about eating. He told him, I can eat all the food to eat. It was good to eat. He said, you may eat of all, every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat of it. For the day you eat of it, you shall surely move, move. You're going to die. You're going to, you're going to, how you say, accelerate your death. Anytime you commit any transgression against Yahuwah, he said, you're going to move, move, which means you're going to accelerate your death. You're going to take off from your life. Your lifespan in, ends faster. It's like going through a video game and you get an extra man and then you hit something. And then guess what happens? Then you lose all your power. And you shrink down. Then you got to power back up. That's the word, and you got to keep going. That's how, that's how your life gets shortened. Then you get to the point where it becomes like dire need, and you need to find something quick. And then you got to hurry up and find it, or you're going to die. Right. Or you ain't going to be able to make that jump, that leap, because you ain't got enough power. Right? It's bear sheath 3, 8 through 13. And they heard the sound of Yahuwah walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of Yahuwah. Allahim, they hid. Why are you hiding? He said, three times a year, your men, you're supposed to appear. Both male and female, y'all supposed to appear, right? And then guess what? He said, they hid themselves from the presence of Yahuwah. Why are you going to hide yourself from his debar? He said, among the trees of the garden. He's like, they hid. But Yahuwah, Allahim, called to Adam. said, where are you? He like, where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, what you hiding yourself for? He said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I command you not to eat? You, where you get that information from? The man said, the woman whom you gave me, she gave me the tree, the fruit of the tree, and I ate. Then Yahuwah Elohim said to the woman, what is this that you have done? And the woman said, the serpent deceived me. And I ate. That word for deceive is Nasha. He beguiled me to deceive. It's Nasha. Seduce. Lead astray. The serpent led me astray. Where did he lead you lead astray at? In your thoughts. Just like Satan comes in the mind and the senses, and he leads you away from one Amuna. Because only, they only had one commandment. And one Allahim. Right? He said deceive, right? He beguiled me. It means to seize, right? So he seized her mind. Verse 3, 16 through 18. To the woman, he said, I will multiply your pain in childbearing, and in pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire to Teshuka shall be to your husband, and he shall mashal over you. He going to rule over you. Just like the kuka beam in the yard. And Yahuwah Elohim, verse Bereshit 3, 16 through 18. And Yahuwah Elohim made two great lights. The greater light to meme shallow the day and the lesser light to meme shallow the night. Right? Because the sun going down right now. So the, the yark and the kuka beam are going to rule. When the stars shine? Stars shine at night. The moon shines at night. But for some reason, the moon ain't getting ready. The moon going to no more. It ain't going to be shining no more. Because it's getting ready to go between the sun and the moon. With the sun and the earth. Right? But it says right here, and the kukabs also. 
and Allahim set them in the expanse of the Rakia to give light to the earth, to mashal over day and night. So if, if you're going to take on the form and the image and likeness of Yahuwah and the, and the things that he gave Adam and Kula, you have to rule. You have to be able to rule. You have to have Mimshallah and mashal in your heart. You have to have Mimshallah and mashal in your heart in order to be in the image and likeness of Yahuwah or even to even be in their punishment. To be outside the garden. Verse 17 says, And Adam, and to Adam he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife, and have eaten of the tree that I commanded you, you shall not eat of it, because she was contaminated, and he became contaminated. Cursed is the ground because of you, and in pain you shall bring eat you in pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. So he ain't tell Adam to eat no animals right here. He ain't tell Adam to eat no animals. Right here. He didn't speak to him concerning no sacrifice of a sin and no animal eating. No eating flesh. He never told him that. Verse 18 said, Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth to you. He's talking about the ground. He ain't talking about no animals. And you shall eat the plants of the field. That's what he told Adam. He said, You're gonna eat the plants of the field. That was his punishment. It's to still eat the plants of the field, and the woman was gonna bear children, and they're gonna rule like the Shamash in the yard. Mim shala ma'or, mim shala ma'or, mim shala. Even the actual kuka. And they're going to mashal over day and night. But they're going to have to eat the plants. And, and guess what? They're going to have to adhere to it. Because that's the commandment that he gave them. Right? And this bear sheets 33, 20 through 24. And Adam named his wife Kawua because she would become the mother of all living. So you want to know who everybody came out from? All the different colors, different people, from one person. She the mother of all living, right? He said, she the mother of all living. And he says, verse 21 says, And Yuhalim he made a garment of skin for Adam and for his wife and clothed them. And Kawul and Yuhalim he said, The man has now become like one of us. Yuhalim gave him garments and skin. He become like one of us. What, what do you mean, one of us? He a God. He a Allahim. Knowing good and evil. Are you saying he has his member? He, he knows good and evil. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand to take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. He said, if he do that, he's going to live forever. So you Allahim banished him, or that word for banished him is Shalak. He sent him from the garden of Aden to work it. So his punishment, his, his work in the garden was to keep the garden. When he was cast out of the garden, he still had to work and keep the garden. Because he was sending him out of the garden. He was in the garden working and keeping it. But then he sent him out of the garden. He got to work and keep that too. And you know what Yahuwah said? The field is the earth. The field is the earth. He was sent out of the garden to till and to keep the ground outside the garden. And that was his punishment. So he never changed what he was going to eat, and he never changed what he was going to do in the garden. He never did it. From which he were taken. And he said, after, 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 guess what he said? To work the ground from which he had been taken, and after he, he, said, after he drove or garaged the man out, he, threw, he drove him out, he garaged him out. He placed on the east side of the garden, this is key, of eating carabine and a flaming sword flashing back and forth, guarding the way of the tree of life in the garden. And he garaged the man to be to till and work the ground outside the garden. He he garaged him out of the garden. Right? That word for, for he drove is garage. It means to drive out, to put away, to thrust. To divorce. This is another same thing. Drive out, to cast away, to drive them away. Right? This is like a divorced woman or drive away. He like, I still sent he's like, I sent you out. But it's also it's still work. But he said the work and keep it. His his commandment never changed. Right? This is sheath 4, 1 through 7. Cain and Abel. Adam made it says Adam made love. That's what it says to his wife, or this is the ESV. And she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. 
She said, with the help of Yahuwah, I brought forth a man. Later, she gave birth to her bro his brother, Abel. Now, Abel kept flocks, and Cain worked the soil. Right? It says, in the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to Yahuwah. So you see them bringing things to Yahuwah. And Abel brought all an offering, fat portion, from some of the firstborn of his flock. Right? And it says right here, and Yahuwah looked at with favor on Abel and his offering. But to Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry, and his face was downcast. Right? So he they both brought something to Yahuwah to eat. Because it's all, remember, you bring in, you bring in something from the, from the soil, because that's what Adam's commandment was when he got cast out. He never stopped. And Abel brought an offering, fat portion, from some of the firstborn of his flock, right? That's what it says. But Cain, in his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry, and his face was downcast. So they basically just brought offerings. Just like you see anybody bring, they brought offerings, right? Then Yahuwah said to Cain, why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will not you be accepted? So he's like, why are you getting mad? You notice all these, these un, I say missing pieces. They just give you these things in these books and people just assume that's exactly what it says. But it says, will you not be accepted? But if thou, but if, but if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door would mean Satan at your door. You know how you say? Satan knocking at your door. He outside your mind. It's desire, it's desire to have you, but you must rule over it. You put mashal over it. The same way he put Adam over the, the night and day, Adam and Kua, and he told him to have dominion over the fish and sea, fowls, every creeping thing. He said, you got to mashal over your own self. You got to rule over your own self. You got to rule over your consciousness. Because you can't rule your consciousness, then Satan gonna take it over, right? This is the second book of Adam and Kuhl. LXXVI, right? Chapter LXXVI, but it says, verse seven says, in that night while they, he was praying, Satan or Satan all appeared unto him under the figure of a man, so that you can pray, and then Satan all coming in your mind, and it says, who said to him? So he's speaking words, because they come in your senses. Thou hast oftentimes moved thy father to make an offering to fast and pray. Therefore, I will kill thee and make thee, make thee perish from this world. That's what he said. But as for Abel, he prayed to Yahuwah and drove away Satan from him. You see what Satan, Satan throwing out threats. You see that? Because you, know you know why people hate people fasting and praying? Because you can do stuff like that. You can cast out Satan. You can tell Satan to shut up. You can tell Satan to, to tour and he'll he'll get off the phone. Right? You, you can say you can you can say a lot of tours to, to Satan and Satan get afraid. He be like, yeah, that fasting and praying, nah. Cause they don't want that. Cause Satan all wants to rule your mind. Just like he told Adam, he said in his same book, he said what? He said he's gonna slave you in the very presence of Yahuwah. That's the only reason Satan was even making himself into an apparition with all those songs. He said he wanted to enslave you in his very presence. And he says, but as for Abal, he prayed to Yahuwah and drove away Satan from him. That's what you got to do. And believe not the words of Satan, of Satan all. Then, when it was day, and Malak of Yahuwah appeared unto him, who said to him, shorten, shorten neither, he says, shorten neither fasting, fasting prayer, nor offering up oblations unto, you, unto, thy, Yahu, unto thy Allahim Yahuwah. He said, don't even stop. He said, don't even shorten it down. For lo, Yahuwah accepted thy prayer. Because huh? he resists Satan and he left. Be not afraid of the figure who, which appeared unto thee in the night. Because what is, what is tonight? This is night time. He said, you, this is a night much remembered. Isn't that what they said? This is, what it say? A night much remembered. This is a night much remembered. And guess what it says? Unto thee in the night, who cursed thee unto death. Huh? Isn't this a night much remembered? What's getting ready to pass through Mizraim? Oh, Mustama. And he, guess what Satan did? He, he tried to enter his mind and curse him to death. But guess what he didn't have in his heart? No idols. And the, and the destroyer passed over him. 
it passed over him. It says, and who cursed thee unto death, and the Malak departed from him. Then when it was day, a ball came to Adam and Kaur and told them the vision he had seen. He saw Satan in a vision. That's an unseen force. But when they heard it, they grieved much over it. He said nothing to him, and he said, yet said nothing to him about it. They only comforted him. They were like, man, look at here. That's the, that's the Satan of Satan all. They already knew who he was. Verse 10 says, but the hard-hearted Cain, but, but as to the hard-hearted Cain, Satan came to him by night. So this is the same night. So you got two different types of people. But here come hard-hearted Cain, which means he got an idol in his heart. Get what it says. Showed himself and said unto him, since Adam and Kahul loved thy brother Habal, much more than they love thee. Right? So he's talking about love and wish to join him in marriage to thy beautiful sister because they love him, but wish to join thee in marriage to the ill favorite sister because they hate thee. Now therefore I counsel thee. When they do that, to kill thy brother. Notice he's talking about killing in the night. We're in the nighttime. This is the night must remember. But he needs somebody to kill somebody. Satan, like, I'll kill you. But guess what? He already had a plan to have his brother kill him. I'm gonna have my brother, I'm gonna have his brother kill him. He said, he says, get what he says, but he said, he said, I want you to kill your brother. So you know when somebody, when something comes to your mind and tell you to kill your brother, you know that's self and all. And it says, then thy sister will be left to thee, and his sister will be cast away. And Satan departed from him. But the wicked one remained behind in the heart of Cain. It stayed in his heart mind his heart it stayed in his heart the seed stayed in his heart that's why when if somebody sows a seed or a human being they got something on the inside and they sow a seed in your heart you gotta make sure that's you gotta get that seed out you gotta get that idol out the same thing this is nighttime this is a night must remember and it says who sought many times who sought many times to kill his brother because once the seed gets something on in your heart you're gonna try to kill your brother Bereshith 4, 1 through 17. ESV, back, continue. Now Cain said to his brother, now he, remember, now you understand why he put it in his heart. But they say right here, the same said to his brother, Habal, let, he said, let's go out in the field while they, he said, let's go out in the field. While they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother, Habal, and killed him. Oh, don't you see that happening today? Yahuwah said, the field is the world. He said, go out into the vineyard and work. Whatsoever good, I will pay, right? But guess what's happening in the field today? You got, you got brother fighting against brothers. And brothers trying to kill brothers in the field. Bunch of canes out here. You got brothers fighting brothers. Bunch of canes. Bunch of quarreling and fighting brothers. You got that out here. Yeah, and this is a night much remembered. Verse 9 says, Then Yahuwah said to Cain, Where is your brother Habal? I don't know, he replied. Am I my brother's keeper or sister's keeper? Even sisters fighting sisters in the, in the field. Sister fighting brother. Brother fighting sister. Verse 10 says, Yahuwah said, What have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. It's a night must remember. But guess who slew Cain? Guess who Cain slew? during this time, this night. His brother. He said, now you are, he said, now you are under a curse and driven from the ground. So now he's like, you driven from the ground, which opens its mouth to receive that brother's blood in the hand, in your hand. When you work the ground, he said, when you work the ground, it will no longer yield crops for you. Didn't know what he told Adam? He said, thorns and thistles is going to yield you. Didn't he say the same thing to Adam? He says, you will be a restless wanderer on the earth. Didn't he cast Adam out of the garden? Cain said to Yahuwah, my punishment is more than I can bear. Today you are driving me from the land. Didn't he drive Adam from the land, from the garden? He says, from the land, and I will be hidden from your presence. Didn't he drive you, Adam from his presence, out of the garden? He says, and I will be a restless wanderer in the earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. So he's literally saying, remember, it's only them. But then he's talking about there's other people here on the earth too. There are other people on the earth too. So he, when Yahuwah is talking to him, he's only talking to a group of people. Adam, his two daughters, his mother, and his two sons. 
they're the only people he, he talked to are, are family, but there's other people on the earth that are not mentioned in this book. And whoever finds me will kill me. Verse 15 says, but Yahuwah said to him, no, not so. Anyone who kills Cain will suffer vengeance seven, seven times over. Then Yahuwah Elohim put a mark on Cain so that no one that no one who found him would kill him. What is that called? That's called mercy. He put mercy in his forehead. It's called mercy and compassion. He put that in his forehead. He put a mark on him. He said that anybody who see you, they're not going to kill you because I put mercy and compassion on you. I caused them to pass over you. Because he was supposed to die. So I, call, I put a mark on you to cause him to pass over you. Pesach. So Cain went out from the Yahuwah's presence and lived in the land of Nod, east of Eden. So he literally gave him the same punishment as Adam. And he drove him away from Adam's family. And he said to Adam's family. He drove him away from Adam and his family because he killed his brother Cain, killed his brother Abal, and guess what? He put a mark on his, on it, still put a mark on him after he killed his brother, his innocent brother, and he allowed him to pass over him when he cast him out of the gun. But he had to have the blood of his brother in order to be cast, not to get killed, to get come. Right, the word for, the word for dropped, he said, today I'm driving you away. That same word when he drove Adam out of the garden is garage. The same word. He drove him from the garden. The same word. To drive out, divorce, to put away. It's the same punishment. As that. He, and notice he didn't speak to him when he drove him out. When he told him to leave, he garage him out of that place. Did he speak to Cain concerning animal sacrifices for sin? After he, his brother was slain? After his blood was slain, after his brother's blood slain, did he speak to him concerning animal sacrifices and sin and eating flesh? Or did he tell him, you're still going to work the ground, but it's not going to yield you. Thorns and thistles is going to yield you the same thing as Adam. Your punishment still is on until I come and bring you back. Isn't that something? And it's right there. It's right there in here. He, he drove, him out of the to drove him out. Right? He said, you'll be a restless wanderer. That word, re that word for... Uh, Restless wonder is renewa. He said, you're going to be a newer. That means a stagger, a wonder, a shake, a disturb, to be gone away. You're going to be disturbed, a quiver, a totter. It means to shake, to reel, to be unstable. Ain't that something? It's, in, it's a to vibrate. He said, you're, vib you're going to be vibrating. It literally says that, to vibrate. You're going to vibrate. You're gonna be a they say you're gonna be a restless wanderer. Like they say, you're gonna be vibrating. It says to shake. You're gonna be continually shaking, staggering. But guess what he got on, guess what he got on your guess what he got on this? He got a mark on him though. That anyone sees you, they ain't gonna kill you. They're gonna pass over you. They're gonna pasak you. They're gonna pasak. Right? That word for wander, it means what? Nude. That's why he said he dwelt in nude. He dwelt as a wanderer, a nude. It means to shake, to waver, to move to and fro. Isn't that what we're supposed to do during Kagog? You know how in Kagog? He said to reel to and fro, Kagog, to move in procession, as like the animals, you know how the animals move? To move to and fro. He said, you're gonna be a wanderer, a to and fro. Take flight. You know what he said? Men going to go to and fro and knowledge is going to be increased? That's what Daniel said. They're going to go to and fro and knowledge is going to be increased. Isn't that what's happening now? Information is being increased. Nothing hidden. Nothing secret ain't going to be known. Nothing hidden ain't going to come to light. Everything's coming to light now. Everybody's putting it out. Knowledge is increasing. And men going to and fro. Men wandering from going from sea to sea. Trying to find the word of Yahuwah. But it said right here, disappeared, right? 
wandering. Some people say, I got the word of you. And you st he said, I'm still wandering from sea to sea. He said, I guess you ain't really searching for it. He said, but the word is right there in your heart. It's in your mind, right? But it says right here, bemoan, to remove. He said, you're going to be a wanderer. You're going to be a newer, a newer nude. <laughs> he said, a newer nude in the earth. That's what he told Cain. And he said, and Cain dwelt in the land of Node. Isn't that what they call Node? Isn't that what they call a master node on a blockchain? Isn't that what they call it? A node? A nude? He said, you're going to be a wanderer in the land of Cain. Notice it says the land of Cain. A node. A blockchain. Like they say, they have a node, a master node, where you can get residual, how you say, residual income. Cain is a wanderer. But he said he had a mark on his forehead. He said he'll pass over him. This book of Yashua, chapter 5, 16, 16 through 18. And Nuak was 400 years, 490 years old when he took Naamah for a wife. And Naamah conceived and buried his son and called his name Yepha, saying, Yahuwah has enlarged me in the earth. And she conceived again. She conceived again and buried his son. And he called his name Shem, saying, Yahuwah made me a remnant, has made a, me a remnant, and raised me up seed in the midst of the earth. Huh? He gave him Shem to raise up a remnant in the earth. It says, and Nuak was 500 years old when he, when Nimaam bare Shem, and the boys grew up and went in the ways of Yahuwah. They all went in the ways of Yahuwah. Shem and, notice he, notice he said, and they went to the ways of Yahuwah. And all that Methuselah and Nuak taught them. Notice you don't see Ham up there. We said, where Ham at? He said, he said, Yepheth and, and Shem. He like, he my son. I don't know. But then notice, notice, notice that they, but they went in the ways of Yahuwah. Which means they ain't worship no idols and they ain't worship no other gods. And they weren't eating, they weren't eating no flesh. Because they were still walking in the commandments that he gave Adam originally. Right, this Nazarene, actually the Shalakim apostles, Ham, the first magician. Hmm? For these and some other causes, causes, a flood was brought upon the world, as we have said already, and we'll say again. And all who were upon the earth were destroyed, huh? Destroyed, except the family of Nuak, who survived with his three sons and their wives. One of one of these was by name Ham, because Ham didn't notice that they walked in the ways of Yahuwah. But he said they're not talking about Ham or Ham. It says Igorously discovered the magical art and handed down the instructions to his sons, who was called Mizraim from whom the, the race of Mizraim, the Babylonians, and the Persians are descended. Him, the tribes who then existed, called Zoroaster, admiring him as the first author of the magic arts. Traitor, whose name also many scrolls on this subject exist. He therefore, being much and frequently intent upon the stars, we just talked about all those cuckoo beans. Remember, we talked about Nimru, the mighty hunter, Orion, the sock, the king of the Ketzil, the seven stars, Ursa Major, Ursa Minor, and wishing to esteemed as a god among them, began to draw forth, as it were, certain sparks from the, the stars. And what is that? Hadron, uh, particle accelerators, particle, particle beam weapons, particle beam, uh, boson, how you say, Atoms, protons, electrons, neurons, pulling, pulling quarks. You can remember, all these things come from star particles. And to show them unto men. You ever seen the wand? And they do the little stars, and they wand, and it spins in the air. And they start showing it to men, or in order that the rude and arrogant, ignorant might be astonished. That means, rude means, how you say, stupid people. As with a miracle. And designed to increase the, this estimation of them, he attempted these things again and again. That's how you know it's Satan. But you know how Satan will do it, just like he did Delilah, over and over again. Like he just keep doing it to try to get you to do it. Until he was set on fire and consumed by the Shadim, the demons himself, whom he accosted with too great importunity. 
he got inflamed by Shadim, demons. Because that's what happens when you go in the way of, out of the way of Yahuwah to worship the stars and draw sparks from stars, and then you take on magical arts, you get Shadim, you get demons, you get, you get beings on the inside of your heart. You get beings on the inside of your heart. Right? This is the book of Bereshit 10, 6 through 13. And the sons of Ham, Cush, Mizraim, Egypt, put in Canaan. The son of Cush, Seba, Havilah, Ramah, Sebekah. The sons of Ramah, Seba, Dedan, Cush, Nimrod. He was the first on the earth to be a mighty man. A mighty man. It says he was, he was, he said he was a mighty hunter. The hunter constellation, Orion. They were, he worshiped the stars. He was the hunter, the mighty hunter. They worshiped the stars. So did Cain. They all worshiped the Kukabim, the stars. Before Yahuwah, the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, Erech, Akkad, Kalnah, Shinar. From the land, he went into Assyria and built Nineveh, resin between Nineveh and Kelah. This is the great city. Mizraim fathered Ludim, Aram, Lothim, Nathim, Parashim, Kalashim, and the Philistines, right? But Nimru was the mighty hunter, right? That were for Father Nimru. Cush, or Ham, or the lineage of Ham, Father Nimru. It means the rebellion, right? You, you rebellion, why? You're practicing sorcery, witchcraft, magic, sorcery, wizardry. You're practicing magical arts, floating stones, all these things that people do. Right, there are men that do this on earth. It says Nimrod, Son of Cush, right? You see that, you see that in re, one of those recent X-Men, maybe like five years ago, he was a levitating star, red levitating stone and, and making the pyramid come back. Right? The son of Cush, it means rebellion. Why? Because he channeled the spirit. He got inflamed by spirits and he worshiped the sun, moon, and star. He worshiped the gods. He worshiped wood and stone. It means rebellion. Is that the word for it? He said he was the first. He says, and Nimrod, he said, and Cush followed Nimrod, he was the first on the earth to be a mighty man. Now it says, he was the first to profane, defile, profane oneself, pierce through, if, that word for Kalah. That same word you saw in, in the beginning, when it says that when he brought, begot Seth, as we spoke about before, he said, then men, then began men to Kalah, Kalah, the name of Yahuwah, they began to pervert the name of Yahuwah. Because out of the ship, he, he's like, man, then they began to do it. Now they started, to, they started to really pervert the name of Yahuwah once he was born. Nimrod. It says, pierce through. It also says right here, to play the flute. To play the flute. You ever see, you ever see Pan? He play a little thing. Right, you see all these beings playing the flute. You know what happens? It says, to properly bore, to pierce through, right? So this right here, that word for hunter is Saeed. He said he became a mighty hunter, Nimrod, the mighty hunter, the hunter star. The, you know, the Greeks call it the mighty hunter, the hunter, with the bow and arrow. They worship Orion. They worship the stars. It means hunting game. They started eating animals. They was a mighty hunter. They started, he started killing all the animals. He started killing all the animals, hunting, food supply. That's their food supply. It says, mean what? What does it say right here? Chase the game. That's what you, that's the thing that you gotta look at. Hunters chase. They chase you. They hunt the game, this food. He was a mighty hunter, right? And the name of his kingdom says, the beginning of his kingdom was Babel. It means confusion. He started to confuse people. Confuse people with what? By worshiping other gods. Because he got, he's causing people to worship other gods. Right? That's, that's why he's confusing people. Right? So this is the Aramaic Targums, chapter 10, 6 through 20. The sons of Ham, Mizraim, put Canaan, provinces of Arabia, then you skip down, the sons of Ramah, Sheba, Dedan, the name of the provinces of Shirites, the Indians, the Semirites, the Libyans, the Zignites, the sons of the of 
Megaros. And it says right here in verse 8, Cush begot Nimrod and began to be a mighty sinner and rebel, rebel on the earth. And the people say, you rebelling, you're rebels. You know how they say. Now he was a mighty hunter. He worshiped the sun, moon, and the stars. He worshiped the, the Shemeshki we in the yard. He worshiped the constellations. Before Yahuwah. He said, you were mighty Nimrud before Yahuwah. You were rebellion. Verse 10 says, the beginning of his kingdom was Babal, the great Adesa. And then also verse 11 says, from the land of Nimrod went forth the rule of Assyria because he did not wish to participate in the schemes of the, division, the generation of divisions, right? Because you know when people dividing off the land today. It says, so he left those four cities. What did Cain build after he left out of the garden? He built the cities. Didn't Cain build a city? Did Adam ever build a city? Adam never built no city. Who built cities? The children of Cain? Cush? Notice who Cush followed in the footsteps of. Cain. So I wonder where well, I wonder where Cain was when Shem and Yarfath were being taught. By his father Nuak in Methuselah. Oh, he was with Cain. How do you think he learned how to do it? How, why do you think he passed it down to his children? Therefore, Yahuwah gave him another place, and he built. Therefore, Yahuwah gave him another place, and he built four other cities: Nineveh, the streets of the city Hadiah, and Salar, which is between Nineveh and Hadiah. That is the great city. All these are a part of Yahuwah's plan. It says, Mizraim begot Ninevites and the Mariotians, the Libyans, and the Penetestinites and the Caseites, right? Skipping down to verse 19. The territory of the Canaanites extended from Bethinos, direction of Gerar, as far as Gaza, in the direction of Sodom and Gomorrah. And Adma and Zoboim, as far as Kali wrote, these are the sons of Ham. People saying, What? The sons of Ham? Yeah. All those people that you people read about, these are all the sons of Ham. From Mizraim to Sodom and Gomorrah to Kelamir, all the way through to the Indians and Libyans, these are all the sons of Ham. I'm sure if you figure out any other, other names, you'll find all the rest of the nations of the sons of Ham. But it says right here, according to the descendants of their clans, according to their languages, they all have different languages and clans, by their settlements in the lands, and by their families. So who rules today? Who rules today? Yafeth, Yafeth rules today? Or does Cush rule today? Right. Or both? Cush, Yafath, and some of Shem rules today. Not all. Because even when she had, when she, Naam had that son Shem, she said, You will birth me a remnant out of Shem. Right. So this is the book of Yasher, chapter 7. 46 through 47, and all the nations and tongues heard of his fame, and they gathered themselves to him, and they bowed down to the earth, and they brought him offerings, and he became the master, their master and king. And they all dwelt with him in the city of Shinar. And Nimrod reigned in the earth over all the sons of Nuak, and they were all under the power and counsel. He's like, man, all the sons of Nuak are under his power and counsel. What happened to Yahuwah? You know how when they came out of the wilderness, he said, they haven't despised you, Shemuel. They despise me from being king over them. He said, give them their king. And you tell them what their king going to do. He said, give them, their, give them their malak. And you think that was something new? That wasn't nothing new. They did that already. He said, he ruled over all the sons of Nuak. And it says, and they were all under his power and counsel. And all the earth was that one language and one word, it's a one, of one tongue and, and words of union. But Nimrud did not go in the ways of Yahuwah. Huh? Of course he didn't. What happened to 
Shem and Yafet, they went in the ways of Yahuwah. But Nimrod didn't go in the ways of Yahuwah. And he was more wicked than all the men that were before him. So all, even his father Cush, or Ham, I mean, he was even wicked than them. Even, even all the men that were even during the flood. They said he was more wicked than them. It says, from the days of the flood until those days. <laughs> and he made gods of wood and stone and bowed down to them and rebelled against Yahuwah. That's how you rebel against Yahuwah. He shakar wood and stone and taught all his subjects and the people of the earth his wicked ways. He taught them all that. And Mardan, his son, was more wickeder Wicked than himself, his father. So you see that? He more wicked than him. Because he come out from the same tree. And notice how Cush was wicked. And then you get to him, he, he was more, you got flood, you had the flood, that's the children of Cain, they were wicked. Then you get to the Cush, he was wicked because he stole things, he put it on the boat, then he birthed these, these children, and then they just get wickeder and wickeder and wickeder and wickeder and wickeder. And wickeder. And that's Mizraim too. And everybody else that associated with it. Right? This is the book of Yasher 8, 1 through 4. And it was in the night that Abram was born, all the servants of Terah. What happened? What's this? What's this night? Oh, this is a night. This is a night much remembered, isn't it? This is a night much remembered. And it was in the night that Abram was born, and all the servants of Terah, and all the wise men, Nimru and his conjurers, huh? Nimrod and his conjurers, they all practice sorcery through demons came and ate and drank in the house of Terah, and they rejoiced with him on that night. Oh, this is a night re must remember, isn't it? Doesn't that sound like some type of event that we do? Oh. It was a night Abraham was born, and they in the house eating and drink, eating in the night. There at night. And when all the wise, all the wise men and the conjurers went out of the house of Terah, they lifted up their eyes toward the Shamaims that night and looked at the stars, huh? They looked at the stars and they saw and behold, one very large star came from the east and ran in the heavens. Oh, you mean like a, like a comet, like a meteor. Cause that's what happens when they travel through the sky, they, they move like a, you mean like a comet. And, it, and guess what it did? And he swallowed up four stars from the four sides of the heavens. Oh, you mean Orion? They were looking at Orion. Cause remember we showed you the four stars. They were looking. They were looking at Orion. Oh, you mean they were looking at the mighty hunter, their god Nimrod. They just left his house. Man, look at our, look at our, look at our Allahim, our god Nimrod, the mighty hunter. And then they saw the star come out, and it started swallowing up to his shoulders and his feet. They like, man, this dude getting ready to kill Nimrod. Because thinking about the interp interpretation of that. Can we just, I just show you the, how the star aligned, but if you take out his shoulders and his feet, what he just did? You just cut off his arms and his legs. And he said, What? And they saw, and behold, one very large star came from the east and ran in the Shamanians, and he swallowed the four stars from the four sides of the heavens. And all the wise men and the king and his conjurers were astonished at the sight, and the sages understood the matter. I ain't even with them. You with him? But you can understand that, right? You can understand that, right? And you're not even with him. And you and the sages understood the matter. Do you we understand it now? And they knew its import. And they said to each other, This is the 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 beat tokens, the child that has been born to Terah this night, who will grow up to be fruitful and multiply and possess all the earth. And he and his children forever. And he and his seed will slay great kings and inherit their lands. You can make that interpretation just by we, you going through all the constellations and the Kuka Beam, and you can, see, you can see that before that person even spoke, before a sage even spoke. You can understand that right now. And you see a, 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 a comet flying through the sky. Amazingly, a comet getting ready to pass through the sky this month. And everybody looking for some signs and everybody expecting something to happen.
right? And the wise men and the conjurers went home that, that night. It's still nighttime. It's a night must remember. And in the morning, all these wise men and the conjurers rose up early and assembled huh, in the appointed house. They all rose up early in the morning and assembled in a house at night after this child was born. And they stood and said to each other, Behold, the sight that we saw last night is hidden from the king, and it has not been made known to him. He's like, man, we saw, remember what we saw last night? And should this thing get known to the king in the latter days, he will say to us, we have, why have you concealed the matter from me? And then he will, shall suffer us death. Therefore, now let us go tell the king the sight that we saw in the interpretation thereof, that we shall then remain clear. And they did so, and they went to the king and, and bowed down to him, to the ground. Who, who they bound to? Orion, the mighty hunter. And they said, may the king live, may the king live. So people like Mizraim, mighty hunter. I'd be like, Nimrod, the mighty hunter. Orion's belt, they all come from one place. All, all, the, all the buildings they built toward it, they, all, they come from Cush all the way down to the descendants of Cain. And it says right here, we heard that your son was born to Terah, the son of Delhor, the prince of those hosts. And we yesterday night came to his house and we ate and drank and rejoiced with him that night. This is the night much remembered. It says, and when the, thy servants went out to the house of Terah to go out to the respective homes to abide there for the night, we lifted up our eyes to Shamaim and we saw a great star coming from the east. And the star ran with great speed and swallowed up four great stars from the four sides of the heavens. They were like, man, look at that. And thy servants were astonished in the sight, and we saw and were greatly terrified, and we made our judgment upon sight, the sight, and knew by our wisdom, the proper interpretation thereof, that this thing applies to the child that was born by Terah, who will grow up and multiply greatly and become powerful and kill all kings of the earth. <laughs> and inherit all their lands, he and his seed forever. Because each one of those shoulders and those feet represented kingdoms on the earth. They said, he gonna kill all the kings. What you think, they, what you think these people are thinking about? When they see a, a comet going in the sky, when they see a, a constellation, they see an eclipse, all this happening at one time, what you think they thinking? You think they think it's something good? No, they're thinking something's getting ready to happen because these same people that exist today. The conjurers and the sages and all these people who interpret the constellations exist today. They still exist. And then once they give an interpretation, then all the, the kingdoms are on high alert. That's how it works. Verse 12 says, And now, our master the king, behold, we have truly acquainted thee with what we have seen concerning this child. They said, man, we we telling you because if it seemed good to the king to give his child value, huh? If it seems good to give the king to give his father value for this child, they gonna give him money. We will slay him. He said, we're gonna kill this child. All we gotta do is convince this father to take this money. You know what it says? Before he grow up and increase in the land, and his evil increase against us, that we and our children perish through this evil. So now you start seeing they're inquiring and now they're looking for that little baby, that little child that's getting ready to grow, that's growing up. It's really small right now, but it seems like a threat and we got to kill this child. And people are like, why don't you say you must humble yourself like a child or you won't see the kingdom? Because you're that little child they want to they want to, they want to take out. Because you're a little child that's growing up. And they see that you got some knowledge. This is Exodus 1, 8 through 22. Now there arose a king out of Mizraim who did not know Yusuf. And he said to his people, Behold, the people of Yashra are too many and too mighty for us. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them. Let us multiply, lest they multiply. And if war breaks out, they join to our enemies and fight against us and escape from the land. Therefore, they set taskmasters over them to afflict them with heavy burdens. And they built Pharaoh's store cities. Who, who, who got a knack for doing that? Cain, Cush, Nimrod, Mizraim. Ain't never, notice how everybody got a knack for doing this. Building these cities, these nodes. 
these nudes, these nodes. Amazingly, when you go to these cities, they have a circle around it. They have a highway around the circle, around the city. They built these nodes. And they connect them all interconnectedly with rivers, I say roads, or stargates, or portals. It says in Pharaoh's store cities, Pith Pithom and Ramses, but, uh, store cities, that's where they store all their food. But the more they are oppressed, the more they multiply, and the more they spread abroad, and the Egyptians were in dread of the people of Yashara. They were like, man, look at here, what do you think they're doing now? So they ruthlessly made the people of Yasharal work as slaves and made their lives bitter. And we're getting ready to eat some bitter herbs. And it says, with hard service and mortar and brick and all kinds of work in the field. Isn't that what they did in Nimrod? He said it in, in chapter 11, he said, they are all wanting with one speech. Let us build this tower and make a name for ourselves and let us get brick and stone and bash it together. They'd be like, I, we don't know how they did it. It seems like it's just a mystery to us, right? People try to come up with all these things. No, it's not a mystery. It's just way more, they just understood work. <laughs> they didn't have a computer. They spent all their time measuring things with their bare hands. But it says, then the king, Mizraim said to Hebrew midwives, one of whom was named Shifra and the other Pua. He said, when you serve as a midwife, the Havri women, and see them in, in the birth stool, if it is a son, you shall kill him. And then what Satan told my brother Cain, he said, who that talking? He said, that's Satan right there. That's the devil. Who do you think them wise men when they told Nimru to kill Abram? That's the Satan. He said, kill him. Give him money and kill his son. He said, but if it is a daughter, you shall let it live. Now you see why they let you live. They'll let you live. They'll let a woman live. A little baby, a little daughter live. But a son, it's like a thalia. When she took out all the, all the sons, you gotta hide your son. But the, the midwives feared Yahuwah and did not do as the king of Mizraim commanded them, but let the male children live, right? That's what you gotta do. So the king of Mizraim called the midwives and said to them, why have you done this? And let the male children live. And the midwife said to Pharaoh, because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian Mizraim women. We ain't like Mizraim. We ain't like Cush. Man, we like Shem. And your father, we, we follow Yahuwah. For they are vigorous and give birth before the midwife comes to them. They all independent. They independent women. They, can't, they don't want nobody to help them. He said, that's, that's the type of women Mizraim is. They independent women. They don't want nobody to help them. He said, they got the Mizraim mindset. <laughs> so Yahuwah dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and grew very strong. So people say, so what do I need? What is, what is Pesach for? Pesach is so that Yahuwah will pass over you, and you don't have nothing of the Mizraim in your heart. Right? So Yahuwah dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and grew strong. And because the midwives feared Yahuwah, he gave them families because they said, we are not like the Mizraim women. So therefore, Yahuwah gave them families because they didn't like them and they feared him more than them. And they didn't listen to Satan at all. Then Pharaoh commanded his, all his people, every son that is born to the Abri, you shall cast into the Nile, but you shall let every daughter live. Right, that's how ruthless they are, right? This book of Yashua, 44 through 53. And the king said to Balaam, what do you say, Balaam? Speak the word <laughs> that we may hear. And Balaam said to the king, oh, all the, of all the king has counseled against the Hebrews, will they be delivered? And the king will not be able to prevail over them with any counsel. For if thou thinkest to lessen them by a flaming fire, Thou canst not prevail over them. For surely their Elohim delivered Abraham, Abram, Abraham, their father, from Ur the Chaldees. And if thou thinkest to destroy their them with sword, surely Yitzhak, their father, was delivered from it. And a ram was placed in his steed. And if with a hard and rigorous labor, thou thinkest to lessen them? Thou wilt not prevail even in this. 
For their father, your coat, served Laban all manner of hard work and prosper. Now, therefore, O king, hear my words. He's like, nothing you can do. Everything they did, it didn't work. No weapons formed against me shall prosper. Right? But he said right here, for this counsel, which is counsel against them, by which thou will prevail over them, and from which thou shouldest thou depart, if it please the king, let him order all their children, which shall be born from this day forward, to be thrown in the water. For by it, by this canst thou wipe away their name. For none of them, nor their fathers, were tried in this manner. So now you see why they take our children away. Now you see why he, he get the midwives. He said, Hebrew women, we love you, Yahuwah. But the Mizraim women, they independent women. And you know what they do? They take the children from the men. They take them. Matter of fact, they killed the son by taking him away from the father. You can kill yourself by taking you away from the father. You can kill your son by taking him away from his father. Let you use your, lose your relationship with Yahuwah and see what happens to you. Verse 51, And the king ordered the proclamation to be issued and a law to be made throughout the land of Mizraim, saying, Every male born in the Abri from this day forward shall be thrown in the water, shall be taken away from the father. shall be taken away from the fathers. And Pharaoh called unto all his servants and saying, Go now and seek throughout the land of Goshen where the children of Yashua are and see that every son born in Abri shall be cast into the river, but every daughter you shall let live. Why? Because if you let them all the daughters live, they get the mindset of Mizraim, you just repeat the cycle. And when the children of Yashua heard this thing, which Pharaoh had commanded to cast, to cast their male children into the river, some of the people separated from their wives and others adhered to them. And that's what people do today. How much that junk, how much it costs? Man, look at here. I ain't having no children. How much it costs to have a children now? Man, I ain't having no children. Man, you see all this stuff happening? Man, I ain't having no children. Man, they got you. They just did it a different way. They raised the prices on you. And y'all, y'all separate. He said, you separated from your wife, right? Why? So you can't have no children, so you ain't got to spend no money. They did it another way. Right? This is, this is Shemuth, Exodus 12, 1 through 6. And Yahuwah said to Mashah and Aaron, in the land of Mishraim, this month shall be the beginning of months. It shall be the month, first month of the year for you. Tell the, all the congregation or the people, the community of Yasharal, the family, on the tenth day of this month, every man shall every man shall take a lamb, according to his father's house, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for the lamb, then he and his nearest neighbor shall take according to the number of the persons, according to that which he shall eat. Verse five says, "Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male, a year old, because he got to be a male, three hundred and full, three hundred sixty-four years, sixty-four days. It got it can't be over that." Ye shall, they said, you may take it from the sheep or the goats, which means this, this lamb, in order for it to be killed during the first month, had to be born in the first month. The lamb had to be born in the first month in order to be killed in the first month to be a, a lamb of a year old. The child had to be born in this month in order for it to be killed in the same month and be one year old without blemish. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. That's where we're at now. And the whole adult congregation shall kill their lamb at twilight. A full 364. They shall kill it at even. Why? They shall kill it at twilight. They said, your lamb shall, your lamb shall be without blemish. That word for lamb is sa. <laughs> the same word for they, the Egyptians had for the father of the gods because they worshipped Orion. Because remember, who was their king? Nimrod. They came from Cush. Pharaoh was their king. And they had the Sah. He was the father of the gods, the lamb. The literal lamb was the father of the gods. They worshipped the stars. Remember, what, is, what was the actual constellations? The Greeks called it a movement of animals in a circle. 
they worship the stars. The star, the father of the gods. The father of the gods, right? So this, the word for twilight is Erev. That's the same word you find in the beginning, evening and morning. That's the same word you find in Bereshi, evening and morning. Same word that you find in Bereshi. You're supposed to kill it at evening, right? That's what we're in. Aramir, Palestinian, Targums, Boal, Pharaoh. Right, 15. And Yahuwah spoke to Mashah and to Aharon and the land of Mizraim, saying, This month is ordained to be to you the beginning of months. And from it you shall begin to number the festivals and the times and cycles. And it shall be to you the first of the number of months of a year. You, you might have measured in the cycle, 364. Speak to all the congregation of the children of Yashra, saying in the tenth month, who time is appointed for this time occasion and not for the coming generations. So this is only one this one time. Every man shall take a lamb for his house, a saw. But if the men of the house are fewer in ten in number, in portion, to the sufficient number of sufficient number to, to eat the lamb, he and his neighbor, who is nearest to his house, shall take according to the number of the souls, each man according to his sufficiency, and cast it, ca and shall be counted for the lamb. Amazingly, when they were in the house of Nimru, they were eating and feasting with the king at night. While the child Abram was being born, it was the same night that the child Abram was being born, and they were in the house eating and feasting at night. This is a night much remembered. From the sheep and or from the goats, you shall take it, and it shall be bound and reserved for you until the fourteenth day of this month, and you may that you may know that and fear Mizraim, fear, fear that you may not know the fear of Mizraim when they see it, Mizraim. And ye shall kill him according to the right of the congregations in the assembly between the suns. Between the horizons of the sun. When the sun, when the sun go down the horizon and it comes Erev. And when the sun goes down the horizon, when it comes Erev again. It's going to come up one time in between the suns. Because the sun goes down the horizon, the moon shines at night. That's where we're in right now. And then the sun goes to the highest point. It needs to be already done before a certain time. And there's a reason why. Right? This is Exodus Shemu 12, 7 through 13. So then they shall take some of the blood of the dumb and put it on the doorposts and the lintels of the house. In which they shall they eat it. They're gonna put it on the house, on your house. They shall eat the flesh basar in the night, roasted with fire, with unleavened bread and matzah and bitter herbs and marah. They shall eat a call it. Do not, do not eat of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it, its head and its legs and its inner parts. And you shall let none of it remain until the morning. Which means we got to eat this before the morning time. Because the sun, go, sun went down and we got to eat it before the morning time. There's a reason why. Anything that remains until the morning, you shall burn. You, anything that remains when the sun come up, you might as well let that burn. You might as well burn it when the sun come up. In this manner, you shall eat it with your belt fastened, your sandals on your feet, and your staffs in your hand. And you shall eat it in haste. It is Yahuwah's Passah. Hmm? It's Yahuwah's Passah. For I will pass through your land that night, and I will strike all the firstborn of the land of Mizraim, both man and beast, and all the gods of Allahim. All the, all the gods of Mizraim. All the gods of the children of Ham and Cush. He's going to smite Orion. And all the other gods that worship Orion. I will execute judgment. I am Yahuwah. The blood shall be a, a sign for you. It's gonna be, it ought to be an uh, oath for you. On the houses where you are. So it got to be on your house. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And no plague shall befall you or destroy you. When I strike the land of Mizraim, so if you got the, any gods, any Allahims of Mizraim in your heart and your mind, if you were like a Mizraim man, a Mizraim woman, a Kushite woman, a, a man that follows the children of Ham, or, or the Sumer or Shinar, if you walk in their ways and you have their mindset, Yahuwah says, I will destroy you this night. When I strike the land of Mizraim, I, he said, I'm going I'm to strike this place down. 
Because this verse three says, for Yahuwah will pass through the land, pass through to strike Mizraim, and when he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts, ye should, Yahuwah will pass over the door and will not allow the destroyer to enter your house to strike you. He won't allow the destroyer to enter your body to strike you if you have the blood on you, if you have the blood of the lamb on your house and within your body. He won't allow the destroyer to enter you this night. But if you do, and you, and you take of it, get what he says, I will destroy you. I will allow the destroyer to enter your body. Right? There were four unleavened bread. He said, you shall eat it with your, eat the flesh, the basar. Notice he's giving them flesh. But why is he giving them flesh? He said, this one time, I'm going to allow you to eat some flesh. And this is the last time you're going to eat flesh. Because I gave, I gave a commandment to Nuwak when they got out the ship that they could eat anything they want. But he said, they don't eat the blood. But now, I'm telling you to put this same blood that I told them to eat, they can eat, put it on your house, and I need you to eat this bread and these bitter herbs. And I need you to put this in your body. And I need you to put the blood on the outside, and I need you to eat the plants on the inside. And I need you to do it in haste. He said, well, I got to put blood on the outside and put plants on the inside. Because I need the blood on, on over you so that I will pass over you. And I need the plants on the inside so I won't allow no demon and no shadina into your body. And then he says, he says, and roasted with fire, it says, it says they, verse 8 says, they shall eat the basar, the flesh, that night, this night, roasted with fire, with unleavened bread, and matzah. Right? So he said, this is the last time you're going to eat flesh. Put it in your body. This is the last time. But if you're going to eat it with bitter herbs, you're going to be eating with all types of things. Get what it says, with unleavened bread. That word for unleavened bread is matzah. Notice what you see in matzah. You see that word sa. They have it. They have it in these books. They have it. They have a sa at the end. He said, "Who can break the bands of Orion? Who can loose the belts of Orion?" He said, "Who can do that?" Yahuwah said, "Who can loose the belt of Orion?" Because the lamb, the word for lamb is sa. He said, who can loose the band, who can break the, the belt of Orion? Or the kit seal? Who can do that? Who can break the band of Orion? I'm going to use a saw to do it. I'm going to use the father of God to do it. And I'm going to use, and he said, who's going to break the bands of, you know, I'm going to break the bands of Orion with, with matzah. Matter of fact, I'm going to do it with a saw, with a lamb. He said, I'm going to do it with a lamb. He said, he said, in this manner, you shall eat it with your belt fastened. Huh? Your belt? Man, who's going to break the belt of Orion? He said, a girded on, a gird oneself on a belt, the Orion's belt. He said, who, he said, who, gonna break, who can break the, the cord of Orion? He said, I'm going to free you from that. He said, I'm going to break the band of Orion. I'm going to free you from the mighty hunter. It says what? To gird on a belt. It says what? The word for sandals in that verse, he said, you should eat with your belts fastened and your sandals. That word for sandals is not all. It's a sandal shoe. Sandals. Say, so who, who gonna break the bands of Orion? But he said, you gonna have the sandals. Where are you, where you gonna have the sandals at? On your feet, on your regard. Oh, what's at the bottom of the star of Orion? If you remember, regard. It was at the bottom of the feet of Orion. He said what? How your sandals on your feet, on your regard, at the bottom of Orion. He said, I'm going to break the bands of Orion on you. And I'm going to do it with a saw, matzah, and I'm going to do it on your regard. I'm going to cover your regard up. I'm going to cover one foot up, regal. I'm a, amazingly, you, amazingly, regal is only one foot of the actual st statue. And he said, I'm going to put that one, put a sandal on there, 
and I'm gonna put, I'm gonna break, I'm gonna put a, you gonna have a belt on. And then he said, he said, I'm gonna break that band. I'm gonna break that whole thing. You're gonna eat some matzah and I'm gonna use a saw to do it. The father of gods. Cause I'm the father of gods. And he's showing them right here. Right? I'm gonna take you from this star worship, right? And he said right here, he shall, eat, he shall eat it with your staff in your hand. Right, that word for staff is makel. It means staff and rod. My staff and your staff and my rod, he said, they come from me. He said, what? David said, who is my shepherd? I have no lack. He making me lie on green pastures, leave me fire the silvers. He store my soul. He said, that rod and that staff, they come from me. He said, you're going to have it in your stand to germinate. Amazingly, what did Orion have in his hand? Well, the one in mid Orion, he, he had a staff in his hand. And he had a belt. And he had regard. He said, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm break the bands of Orion on you, on your consciousness, on your heart. And you're going to have a blood over you, and I'm going to pass over you. And I'm not even going to touch you. Because what did he say? What did he say to uh, Meshach when he went to see Pharaoh? He said, "I made him a god. I made you a god to him. I made you Orion." Because only 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 people who listen to Allahims and gods are other gods. He said, "I made you a god to him." That's the only way you're gonna listen to him. He said, "You are gonna eat it in haste." He said, "Keep us on. Eat it in haste." He said, hasty flight. He said, you're going to do it really fast. Because you got to do it fast. Because you know how we are. As soon as we get a commandment, he was like, do it real quick. Break down their altars. Tear it down real fast. If you don't do it fast enough, guess what happens? We're going to end up worshiping it. Oh, regal star. Oh, sandal. Oh, you're going to start doing, adding a special sauce to the actual, how you say, the actual little quick thing we're supposed to do. Right? Going right here, right? He said, he said this is here. Who is Pesach? He said, in this manner you shall eat it. With your sandals fasting, he said, this is here. Who is Pesach? That word for Pesach, word for Passover is Pesach. Right? You got Pesach right here. Passover. He said, I'm going to pass over you. Just like Cain. He put a mark on him, and he's going to pass over. Anybody who see you, going to pass over you. I'm going to show you calm. Right? When the son was born, they were in the house with, when they were in Nimrod, and he and what? It passed over. It was a Passover. He said, I'm gonna cause it to pass over you. I'm a Pasak. Right? We look at that word Pasak, well, of course they got it. Right, they got they got it with a hay at the at the top. In one Hebrew study word, then in the strong concordance, they have a, a hut at the end, and the other one they had a hut at the end. So I did it in all of them, right? So I knew I didn't do it the last time, so I did it again, right? So they got Pesach. You got Pesach, right? In the, in the strong concordance, is Pa, Samic, and Ka, right? Or Hath, right? You got the what? Pa is what? Pa is what? 80? Pa is 80. Samic is 60. Ka is 8. We use a 148, which equals a 13. Was equal to what? Four. That's Pesach. Then you see, well, they got Pesach at the end. They got Pesach up there, right? This is how Yahuwah make foolishness, all the stuff they do, right? You got Pesach. You got Pesach. Because they say Pesach. So they at the, at the end. So they say Pesach, right? And then you got what? You got the Pa, which is 80. The Samic is 60. And then you got the Ha, which is what? Five. We 145, I believe, right? Yeah, 145. We use the what? 10. We use the one. How many, how many, how many lamb, Pasak lambs we got? Oh, Pasak. Or Pasak. Oh, we got Pasak, one lamb. Or oh, Pasak 13, right? That still equals to Husha. Pasak. And then you got what? A cod. Right? When you look at a cod, what, what is a cod equal to? Olive, Kaf, and Dalif. Equals to 13. So either way it go, it's still only one lamb. There's only one Pesach, and there's only one time you eating lamb. There's only one time you are eating lamb, and you say, yeah, not for future generation. And that was that time some 5,000 years ago. 
But get, that's what man couldn't do. It couldn't stop. Right? You're going to see why. Right? It said right here, and it says, For you, Exodus 12, 7, 13, 7, 13, or verse 23 of Exodus 12, For Yahuwah will pass through the strike the Egyptians, and when he sees the blood of the lentils on the doorpost, Yahuwah will pass over the door and will not allow the destroyer to enter your house. He's not going to allow him to come into your body. And that destroyer is where the shakah. Because when the spirit, this demon, this spirit comes inside of your body, if you don't have the blood on top of you or blood on you, it's going to what? It's going to destroy you, corrupt you. It's going to ruin you. It's going to decay you. You know how I talked about he sent wasting disease through Yashara? Because they didn't have the blood no more. They didn't believe. He says to be marred, to pervert. It's going to pervert you. It's going to pervert your thoughts and your mind, your conscience. That's Satan. We just talked about it entering into your senses. Kill your brother. Kill your brother. Kill your sister. Kill the firstborn child. Kill. Kill. Right? That's what he's going to do. How much money you need to kill your son? He said cast out. Act corruptly. Destroyers. Destroyers. Corrupt. That's why, that's why you can't talk to everybody. People say, like, why you can't talk to that person? Because that person is this, he, that person to destroy you. You just don't know he's to destroy you. Because when he say something, you get that seed inside of your mind. Now he, you ain't got the blood of Yahushua. You, you let your guard down because there's something you love in the world. And Satan send you an apparition. And he has somebody come talk to you. He try to get you to go that way and all that. And then guess what? That seed get in your mind. And now guess what? Now the destroyer come and waste away your body. And he ain't got your mind for three, four days. And you can't even think. He said, it'll cause you ruin. Take you from your purpose. Take you from your, take you from everything. The Pseudopographa, volume one, six, one through eight. And it came to pass when the children of men had multiplied in those days, were born unto them beautiful and comely daughters. And the Malachim of the children of Shamayim saw and lusted after them and said one to another, let us choose wives from among the children of men, or you mean Cain, and beget us children. And Shemyaza, who was their leader, said unto them, I fear you will not indeed agree to this deed, and I alone shall have to pay the penalty of this great sin. And all, and, and all answered him and said, Let us all swear an oath and bind ourselves to mutual imprecation and abandon this plan to do this thing. And he says, then, they, then swear they all together and bound themselves into mutual imprecation, and they were in all two hundred. Huh? 200 who descended from days of Jared to the summit of Mount Hermon, and they called it Mount Hermon, because they had sworn to bound themselves in imprecation upon it. 200 invaded the earth. Can you imagine? And these are the names of their leaders. Samalaz, Arakabah, Ramiel, Kabakal, Tamiel, Ramiel, Daniel, Azekiel. These are all stars, you know that, right? These are gods. The Allahims. These are stars. Amaros, Baratal, Ananal, Zarakal, Zarafal, Sataral, Tarial, Garal, Sarial. These are the chiefs of tens. These are all the sons of Allahim. These are the Kukub. These are the Ka. These are the stars. Right? And you have Pseudopographer, Volume, volume 1, se Chapter 7, First Enoch. One through six. And all the others together with them took on themselves wives and each chose for himself one and they began to go into them and to follow themselves. Of course, this story has a bigger story because they shapeshifted in other people's husbands too. And they, they slept with other men's wives. Matter of fact, they even fornicated. It says, and they began, and, they, and guess what it says? And they taught them charms, enchantments, cutting of roots, and acquainting them with plants. Plants to eat? Isn't that what Yahuwah gave Adam to eat? Plants? No, nah, it's the difference between acquainting with enchantments and charms to use plants to cast spells on people. Love spells, root spells. That's what they used it for. He said, plants got that type of power? Yes, plants are alive. Plants are living beings. Plants have power. Or powers. Why do you think he told them to eat bitter herbs with the unleavened bread? They have powers. 
whose height was three, you know what it says? And they became pregnant and they bear great giants. Oh, are we talking about giants? The giant hunters, the giant hunter. The giant stars, dwarf stars of the Pleiades. It says, whose heights was 3,000 L's, who consumed all acquisitions of men. They consumed all of the acquisitions they're talking about, all of the things on the earth. They literally destroyed it. And when the men could no longer sustain them, because they, they're literally wiping the whole earth clean, the giants turned against them and devoured mankind. They started eating people, eating human flesh. And once you consume all the animals, then guess what happens? This is what giants and Nephilim do. Because Yahuwah gave man every, every seed or plant for food. But then these beings came into the world through unlawful intercourse and created these beings. And guess what these beings did? They had children. And guess what they started to do? And they began to sin against birds. They started eating them. Beasts, eating them. Reptiles and fish and devour one another's flesh. They started eating everything. And drink blood. This is what they started to do. Is that... And this is even before he got to gave the commandment to Noah. Because Yahuwah, when he cast Adam out of the garden, and when he cast Cain out, he never spoke to them concerning no animal sacrifices or eating flesh. He never told them. He never spoke to them concerning animal sacrifices or eating flesh. So where they get it from? The giants, the Nephilim, intercourse. Because this is when it all started. Then the earth laid accusations against the lawless one. Then the whole Adas, Mother Earth, like they say, laid acquisitions against them. Accusations to Yahuwah in the highest Shamayim. They said, look at these giants. Look at these sons of Allahim you guys had come down here. These, these, these sons of Allahim. Look what they did. They made an agreement. This is not even Satan all. This is after Satan all. These are different beings. He said, where's Shemjaza in the map? They bound down the earth somewhere. This is 1st Enoch, Aleph Hanuk, Volume 1, Suda Pagraph, 8, 1-4. And Azazel taught men to make swords and knives and shields and breastplates and make them known in metals of the earth and the art of working them and bracelets and ornaments and the using of enemy and beautifying the eyelids and all kinds of costly stones and coloring tinctures. What do you think he did all this for? To draw men away from Yahuwah. Why, why do you think he had all those eating flesh for eating flesh of animals and destroying all acquisitions and biting eating other things takes you away from Yahuwah because Yahuwah ain't never give you that commitment and then you using all these other things they're teaching to make takes you away from Yahuwah and if you leave Yahuwah then you're going to start worshiping idols wood and stone let's see and there arose among much godlessness and they committed fornication that's what's going to happen after eating flesh going after these things it creates fornication. That means sleeping outside of, you, you just leave it, you just have it just having intercourse for no, absolutely no reason, just because it's just pleasure. And they were led astray and became corrupt in all their ways. And some Jaza taught enchantments, root cutting. This is what they, the world has created. Amaros, the resolving of enchantments. So some Jaza teaches the enchantments, and then Amaros teach you how to get out of the enchantments. Like, this is what you got to do to get out. Somebody did a root spell on you, now you gotta do this to get out. That's how that's how crazy. Baratal taught astrology. That's numerology, that's like the astrological movements, right? Kaba Kuba called co constellations. For what? Why are they teaching it? For you to worship it. That's why Nimrud had what? They had the constellation viewers, he had the sages, he had them to interpret the stars. They all followed these patterns. That's why we were going through and reading the stars and seeing them. And now you can see for yourself where it comes from. It comes from the fallen. Ezekiel taught the knowledge of the clouds. Because you know as rain and snow come down from Charmaine, so the Yahuwah, the bar come out of his mouth. Akuriel, the signs on the earth. Now you see all the signs, the comets. You see the, the eclipses and all these things. These are signs. All these are signs on the earth. All these are Akuriel. The purpose of these signs is to get people to worship different signs on the earth. Not to worship Yahuwah and his son, Yahushua. Shashiel, the sun, the sign of the sun, but the sun rolls around in seven celestial circles, and people worship the sun today. Haliel, Lucifer, like they call it, they worship the sun. They worship the horizon. And Sariel, course of the moon. 
We just, you go through the moon. They worship the moon. That's why he talked about men leaving the moon, leaving the, leaving the sun to go to the moon. They examine the moon very carefully and they lose their course of time. And as men perish, they cry. As men started to die. Why? Because the destroyer came. How you say? The destroyer was no longer passing, passing over people anymore. Because they had all these things in their heart and men began to die. And guess what? There was a cry. And they cried, went to Shamayim. Then they cried out after being started to die because they had these other gods in their heart. Because they didn't get their passed over. How you say? They didn't get passed over. They had these in their heart, so therefore they didn't get passed over. The destroyer came in there and they killed him. This first Enoch, 15 and 8. But now the giants were born. This first Enoch, 15 and 8, Supergraph Volume 1. But now giants who are born from the union of the spirits and the flesh shall be called evil spirits on the earth. Now you see where he talks about these evil spirits going inside your body. The destroyer. Because their dwelling shall be upon the earth and inside the earth. That's on the surface of the earth and in the earth. Evil spirits have come from their bodies. From whose bodies? The union, the intercourse between the sons of Allahim who came from the highest, from the Shamayim, I'm sorry, and had intercourse. They created giants who ate flesh of animals, birds, every creeping thing, that behemoth, and they ate and devoured all the acquisitions of men and animals. It says evil spirits have come from their bodies. That's why when people, you start seeing, you, when you start entangling yourself with these beings, or these things out here, and they, they spike you, put something in your in your food, then you start getting, they try to draw the evil spirits by putting put pork in it, put unclean food, put, put meat in it, put it in your body, get a parasite, throw it in, throw it in it, they'll put it in even a vegan patty. They'll put, they'll put tapeworms in vegan patties and put all types of parasites inside of this thing. They'll put it in vegan food. Just to poison you. Evil spirits have come from their bodies because they, from that day, that they were created from the Kudash ones, they became the watchers. Their first origin is the spiritual foundation. They will become evil spirit, evil, evil spirits upon the earth, and they shall be called, it says they shall be become evil upon the earth, and shall be called evil spirits. I say Shadim. Their dwelling of the spiritual beings of the Shamaims is Shamaims, but the dwellings of the spirits of the earth. Of the earth, and these are evil spirits. Guess what it says right here? This pseudepigrapha, well, Book of Jubilees 49, pseudepigrapha, volume 2, 49 through 1 through 3. Remember the commandment which Yahuwah commanded concerning Pesach, that you observe it in its time. That's where we're at. The 14th day of the first month, ye shall make a sacrifice before you, that you might sacrifice it before it becomes evening. Right? It says right here, and it says, and so that you might eat it during the night. He said, why do you, you think we started? Why do you think we started? Before the evening time. People are like, why are you? Because you got, he said, well, you starting before the evening time. And it says, you may do it, eat it during the night on the evening of the, they said, the 15th of the, the time of sunset. Right? Because that's, that's what these these people put in here. Why? Because they want you to do it without doing it at the proper time. Why? So you can die. So something can happen to you. For on that night, for on this night, they, there was there there was the beginning of the feast, and there was the beginning of joy. You continue eating the pesach in Mizraim, and all the powers of Mustama were sent to kill all the firstborn in the land of Mizraim, from the firstborn of Pharaoh to the firstborn of the captive maidservant, who was at the millstone, and to the cattle. But you you like, was it the first time this was actually kept? He said, for this generation, but not. But he said, what? In Mizraim, all the power of Mustang was sent to kill all the firstborn in the land of Mizraim and the firstborn of Pharaoh and the firstborn of every captive maidservant who was at the millstone and to cattle. So now you see this big old huge slaughter fest, not only of lambs, of Sah, of the father of gods, which was Orion during that time, and Nimrud, and all the beings who worshiped the stars from, from Cain all the way through, from the fallen Malachi teaching, from Shemjaza all the way through, 
But then you also see even the animals being killed. Because remember, the, the, the evil spirit, they sing against animals, reptiles, beasts. They sing against everything. Right? This is the book of Jubilees. Nuach's prayer, prayer against the demons. In the third week of the Jubilee, the polluted demons began to lead astray the children of Nuach, the sons leading them to folly, to destroy them. Because that's what they're created to do. And the sons of Nuach came to, 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 to Noah, Nuach, their father, and they told him about the demons that were leading astray and binding and killing his grandchildren. And he prayed before Yahuwah is Allahim, and he said to Allahim of the spirits of all flesh who acted mercilessly with me and saved me from my sons and my water of the flood, he, and did not let me perish as you did the children of perdition, because great was the con upon me, and great was your mercy upon my soul. Let the con be lifted up upon my sons, and do not let the evil spirits who were the, the offspring of the fallen, who died, rule over them, let's say destroy them from the earth. That's what's getting ready to happen. That's why he said you got to eat a facade. He said you got to eat my, if you don't eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. If you don't cover yourself in the blood, you have no life in you. And guess what? The demons, the Shadim, are going to destroy you. But Barak, me, and my sons, let us grow and increase and fill the earth. And let, and, and you know that which your watchers, the fathers of these spirits, did in my days. And also these spirits who are alive, shut them up. And take them to the place of judgment. You know who he's talking about? The father of them spirits. Shemjazel, Azazel, Amarok, all these beings, they taught all that stuff. And do not let them cause corruption among the sons of your servants, because you can't see them. Because they are cruel, and they are created to destroy. That's all the powers of Mustama. Satan all. Right? And it says, and let them not rule over the, over the, over the spirits. It says a living because you alone know their judgment and do not let them have power over the children of the righteous henceforth and forever. Right, this is uh, Shemuth, Exodus 12, 21 through 28. Then Mashiach called all the elders of the sons of them, says, said unto them, go and select the lambs for yourselves according to the clans and kill the Pesach lamb. Right, skipping down to verse 23, for Yahuwah will pass through and strike the Egyptians and when he sees the blood, on the lintels and on the two doorposts, Yahuwah will pass over the door and not allow the destroyer to enter your house and strike you. Which means he's going to come in and that demon and that spirit going to strike you. And you shall observe the right of the statute for you, for you and your sons forever. Verse 27, you shall, you shall say, it is a sacrifice of Yahuwah's Pesach. For he passed over the houses. Know you not that your body is the temple of Yahuwah? of the people of Yashra in Mizraim. When he struck the Mizraim, but spared our houses. Why? Because you had the blood on you. You didn't worship their gods. You didn't have the teachers of some Jaza, Azazel, and the fallen. You didn't worship Orion, the Pleiades, the, the Ursa Minor, Ursa Major. You didn't worship their gods, the great bear, the, the Aishi, right? You didn't worship these things. It says, and the people bowed their heads and worshiped. Huh? They bowed their heads and worshiped. Then the people of Yasharal, right, went and did so, as Yahuwah had commanded. Mashah and Aaron, so they did, right? So this is 1229. It says, and at midnight, huh, Yahuwah struck down all the firstborn of the land of Mizraim. Firstbor firstborn of Mizraim, from Pharaoh, who sat on his throne, to the firstborn of the captive, who was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of the livestock. He didn't. Because it doesn't matter. They were in prison. They still worship the Elohim and all the gods. And Pharaoh rose up that night. What do you mean this night? And he and all his servants and all the Egyptians. And there was a great cry in Mizraim. Didn't you know what happened during the time of Shemjazan? He said, man, the men began to perish. And they began to cry out to, and they came to Yahuwah in the highest Shemaim. Ain't that amazing, right? Because they all had the teachings. And they were worshiping the sun, moon, and the stars. They were worshiping the teachings of wood, stone, metal, mirrors, bracelets, ornaments, enchantments, roots. They were worshiping these things. Astronomy, astrology. They were worshiping these things. They were, they were filling their heart with it. And Yahuwah said, I'm going to destroy these people. He said, what is Yahuwah doing with this Debar? He's scanning people right now. 
Why? That's what he does. He's scanning everybody. He's seeing who got him. So why you go through all these stars and the cuckoo beam in the yard? He goes, he wanna see who has him. For there was not a house where someone was not dead. Huh? Then, because they had a blood on them. Then he summoned Mashiach and Aaron by night and said on set up, go up, go up from uh, among my people, both you and your people, Yashra, and go and serve Yahuwah, as you said. Take your flocks and your herds, as you have said, and go and bless me also. He's like, man, look at here. Be blessed, Barak. You know how people say, man, you go ahead and go, man. You be blessed. Man, just get up out of here. You got to go, man. We can't even do what we want to do here as long as you're here. We can't worship our gods. We can't smoke. We can't drink. We can't commit fornication and you while you're here. We can't slander people while you're here. Right? You know how people do in these places? We can't do that here. As long as you're here, you got to get up out of here. But he says, he said, you got to go. Or this should move Exodus 12, 33 through 39. The Egyptians were urgent on the people with the people. And sent them out of the land of Mizraim in haste. Huh? For they said, We shall, we are all dead, we all be dead. So the people took their dough before it was leavened, their kneading troughs being bound in their cloaks and their shoulders. And the people of Yashra had also done as Mashah told them. For they had asked the Egyptians for silver and gold and jewelry and for clothing. And Yahuwah had given the people favor in the sight of Mizraim, so that they let them have what they asked. Thus they plundered the Egyptians, and the people of Yasharal journeyed to Ramsey and Sukkot, 600,000 men on foot. By skipping down to verse 39, and they baked unleavened cakes and dough that they had brought from Mizraim, for it was not leavened, because they were thrust out. That same word you had for Cain when he was kicked out is Garash of Mizraim. The same word when he had Adam when he was thrown out, he was driven out, is Garash. That same word is in here. When Yahuwah told him to cast him out of Mizraim, he never spake to them concerning eating no flesh. He said it was only for that night, that one time. After that, he told him, I ain't never told you to eat no more flesh, and I told you never to eat no more, do no sacrifices. The same thing he told Adam when he left the garden. The same thing he told Cain we left the garden, but Cain did not continue in what Yahuwah told him, and he started eating flesh after he left. The same thing the children of Yasharal did after they left Mizraim. They wanted flesh. They wanted to do the things that they didn't do before when some Jaza came on the scene. They wanted to be like the Nephilim. And then guess what? Yahuwah said, eat your flesh again. He said, but he sent people before again, saying, we, Yahuwah never spake to you concerning animal sacrifices and eating flesh. Because as soon as you start eating flesh, you see what the evil spirits started doing. They started devouring all acquisitions, and then they just started devouring each other, and then guess what happened? Then they started to cry to Yahuwah, those who were dying because of those people. This is Exodus Shemuth 12, verse 40. The, the, he said, the time that the people of Yashra lived in Mizraim were 430 years. And at the end of 430 years, on that very day, all the hosts of Yahuwah went out from the land of Mizraim, and it was night. It was a night of watching by Yahuwah. It was a night of much watching to bring them out of the land of Mizraim. So this same night is a night of watching. Oh, this night. It's a night of watching. Watching for who? So this same night, it's a night of watching, kept to Yahuwah by all the people of Yashara throughout your generations. It's a night of month watching. Right? The word for watching is Shemur, or Shemar. It's a night watch, observance. I say, just like they say, to work it and keep it. Notice how he said, this is a night of more watching, because you're supposed to watch over the garden. You're supposed to protect it. You're supposed to guard it. Amazing, you're supposed to guard something. You're supposed to guard your heart. You're supposed to watch. You got to guard. You know what he told Adam to do? Amazing, he told him he threw him out garage in haste. And he put him out the same way that he did with Adam and Cain. He told him that not, he didn't speak to him concerning animal sacrifices. And then he told him to shamar after he left. Then he told him to watch after you leave. It's the same thing. I seen you, you was in the garden. I told you to work it and keep it. And when I sent you out of the garden, I told you to be a servant and keep it. 
Same thing, right? Dabarim 16 to 1. Observe the month of Abib and keep the Pesach to Yahuwah, your Allahim, in, for the month, in this month. Yahuwah, our Allahim, brought us out of the land of Mizraim by night. This is a night much remember. He brought us out of Mizraim. But everybody didn't guard their hearts. Remember what Cain and Abel, uh, Habal did? Habal guarded his heart, but Cain, he allowed it to stay in his heart. When Satan spoke to him, it made him feel loved. And he killed his brother. But he said, this saw, this lamb had to die. He said, you shall offer the pasach, sacrifice of Yahuwah Elohim, the flock of your herd, and place it at the place that Yahuwah will choose to make his name dwell there. You shall, huh? Yahuwah said, you, I have, you haven't chose me, I chose you. You shall eat no leavened bread with it. Seven days you shall eat it, uh, eat Seven days you shall eat with unleavened bread, the bread of affliction. For you came out of the land of Mizraim in haste, that all the days of your life you may remember, huh? you may zakar, you may zakar, or zakur, the day when you came out of the land of Mizraim, or you, when you came out of the land of the gods, the land of Nimrud, the land, the land of the worship of Kukavim and Yard, the worship of Orion. Pleiades, Ursa Major, Ursa Mater, the Kima, the Kit Seal, worshiping wood and stone and clay, worshiping the sun, moon, the stars, the mirrors, the bracelets, the ornaments, the enchantments, the roots, the cutting, the cutting of, of roots, incantations, astronomy, astrology, right? And, and all types of all types of gods and Allahims, wood and stone in the sea and on the earth. The Mizraim come from the children of Cush and Ham and Ham from the lineage of Nimrod and Nimrud and go all the way back to Cain when they started eating flesh and consuming the acquisitions of men and started eating animals and destroying the earth and falling after these things. So that when he says he brought you out of the land of Mizraim, he's talking about the whole lineage of Ham all the way to Cain. And he never spoke to you concerning eating flesh and animal sacrifice in killing animals. He said, only obey my voice. Right? The word for, I say, Nisan or Nisan is their flight. Hasty flight. He said, he said are you riding on the wings of the wind tonight? Right? This is Yeshayahu 91. But there will be no gloom for her who was in anguish. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zabalun and the land of Natali. But in the latter time, he made, he has made more glorious the way of the sea and the land beyond Yardan and Galilee and the nations. The people who walked in darkness. This is, well, this is a great night, right? This is a great, this is a night that we remember. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelled in the land of deep darkness, on them light or has shone. Amazingly, when they were in they were all, it was darkness that you could touch it, but they had light in their houses. Guess what it says, verse 6, For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given. Oh, you mean Abram was born. When Abram born? And they were in the house eating and feasting, right? At night. Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. He's going to kill all the kings. He's going he gonna to take out all the kings. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty Allahim. Oh, you mean he's going to destroy the Mighty Hunter? If he's going to destroy all the king, he's going to destroy the Mighty Hunter, Orion. He's going he gonna to take out all of them. The Great Bear. He's going to take out all of them. The Pleiades. How you saying? He's going to take them all out. All the kings who worship the stars. But he said right here, Everlasting Father. Oh, the father, oh, you mean the father of gods. The everlasting Ab, the prince of Shalom, in the increase of his government and of Shalom, there will be no end upon the throne of Dawu, David, and over his kingdom to establish it and uphold it with justice, with righteousness from this time forevermore. The zeal of Yahuwah of hosts will do this. This is Yeshayahu 52 and 13 through 14. Behold, my servant shall act wisely. 
he shall be high and lifted up. He shall be exalted. He shall be room, exalted. What do you mean high and exalted? Where are stars at? In the sky? When do they shine? At night. As many were astonished at you, his appearance was so marred beyond human resemblance, or each, or each, and his form beyond that of the children of mankind, of Adam. It's Yeshua 7, 13 through 15. And he said, Hear then, O house of Dawood, is it too little for you to weary men, that you weary my Allahim also? Therefore Yahuwah himself will give you a, so a sign. Who taught the signs? Arikal? Arikal taught the signs of the Shamaims. He will give you a sign of the earth. He, told, he taught the signs of the earth too. And he said, Behold, an Alma, a virgin, that's a virgin, Alma is a virgin of age to be married, shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Aman Ual. And he shall eat curds, huh? He shall eat the curds and the honey. The debosh, he gonna eat honey? Oh, you gonna eat the honey? He gonna eat the honeycomb. And when he knows how to, he says, when he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, that's when he gonna eat the honeycomb. When he, when he refuses evil and he eat good, he gonna eat the honeycomb. He gonna eat the debosh. He gonna eat the fa. He gonna eat the honeycomb like the bear. You know, like a bear eat the honeycomb. He gonna eat the honeycomb. He gonna choose the good. He gonna eat the honeycomb. Curds is like cheese. That's like, that's like a, a, a lactose, a non lactose intolerant cheese. It's like a, that's what it is. But it says a debosh. He gonna eat the honey. Right, that word for Emmanuel is Emmanuel, right? Emmanuel. Aman Ual, right? And guess what it means? It means God Allahim with us, Yahuwah with us. And amazing, what is Sa equal to? Sa equal to eight. And amazingly, Emmanuel, Emmanuel equal to eight. Oh, you mean the Father of Gods is with us. The Sa, the Lamb of Allahim. Right, because you got the Emmanuel, the Ayin, the Mim, the Nun, the Wu, the Aleph, and the Lamed. Right, I remember I had put a cough here. I didn't even realize it. And then guess what? It's still even the 14. I was talking about 14 generation when Yahushua came. But then now you see here, it's still the Lamb of Yahuwah. And it's still the same thing. It's still the same thing. I remember. But it says right here, Ayin is 70, Mim is 40, Noon is 50, Wu is 6, Olive is 1, Lamed is 30. He was a 197. Right, he was equal to 17. We see equals to what? We equals to what? Eight. And guess what? Yahuwah, the bar equals to eight. Yahuwah equals to eight. The sa equals to eight. And amazingly, the lamb of Yahuwah is the father of gods. And that's what they, Mizraim God. They said, who could break the bands of Orion? Who could break it? Who could break the belt of Orion? He said, make sure you eat it with your staff in your hand with the bitter herbs and your sandals on your regal at the bottom of your feet. That's the bottom foot of Orion. Yeah, I'm going to break the bands of Orion. I'm going to take out one leg and I'm going to break his belt. And make sure you have your staff in your hand too. And I'm going to use the saw to follow the gods that they thought. And I'm going to use that same saw. And guess what? I'm going to be the father of our gods with men. This is Matthew 1, 17. All the generations from Abraham to Daoud were 14 generations. And from Daoud to the deportation of Babylon, or he mean Babylon or Nimrud or Babel, which means confusion, is 14 generations. Because Abraham, remember Abraham was born, what they were doing in the house? They were feasting. It was a night, they were feasting. It was a night much remember. And they were, look, they were feasting and they left the house and they saw a sign in the Shamayim in the middle of the night. After they finished taking, after they finished feasting, and Abram was being born, they said, "Man, we saw a star, a comet flying in the air." So all the journey from Abram to 
David were 14 generations. And from Daud to the deportation of Babylon were 14 generations. And from the deportation of Babylon to Mashiach, 14 generations. Huh? From Babylon. So what kingdom was Mizraim? Was it Mizraim? They'd be like, man, that's Mizraim. That's Egypt. No, that was actually Babylon. It was just a continuation of the same kingdom. It was the same kingdom. Babylon. It's the same kingdom. Different city. Same kingdom. Babylon. Babylon. This is Luke Oriah 126. In the sixth month, the Malak Gabra all was sent to Yahuwah, the city of Galilee, and Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man or Alma whose name was Yusuf. She was not of age to be married yet, to have a child. Of the house of Daud, and the virgin's name was Marim. And he came and said to her, Greetings, O favorite one. Now she's at an age to have a child. She wasn't before. Yahuwah is with you, but she was greatly, tro but she was greatly troubled and saying, and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. She's like, man, what, kind of, what you doing? And the Malak said to her, do not be afraid, Marim, for you, are, you have found favor in Yahuwah, and behold, you shall conceive in the womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Yahushua. He will be great and will be called the son of the Most High. He's going he to he 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 be a son of Yahuwah. And Yahuwah Elohim will give him the throne of your father Daud. He's going to be a king. So you tell me he's going to take over my reign. So you think about that, a king and ruler. Let's see what type of guys he served in, in Yehuda. Because he's supposed to sit on David's throne. Let's see what type of guys Yehuda serving. And he will reign over the house of Yaakov forever. In his kingdom, there will be no end. And Marim said to the Malak, how will this be? Such I am a virgin. I'm an I'm a Alma. I ain't finna get have no intercourse. And the Malak said to her, the Kudash Ruach will come upon you. Huh? And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Overshadow you. What, what's created in the eclipse? On the earth? A shadow. When the moon passes right between the sun and the earth. He said, I'm going to overshadow you. I'm a, it's going to overshadow you. It's going to cover you. What happened during Pesach? You who say, I'm going to pass over you. I'm going to cover you. And amazingly, you, therefore the child to be born will be called Kudash, the son of Yahuwah. And behold, your relative, if he the son of Yahuwah, every king on the earth need to be afraid. He's going to rule all kings. He rule you the son of Yahuwah, Nehaya Shamayim. And behold, the relative of Al Yashaba, her old age, has also conceived a son. And in this sixth month, it says, and this is the sixth month with her whom she called barren. For nothing will be impossible with Yahuwah. And Marim said, Behold, I am, your servant. I am the servant of Yahuwah. Let it be to me according to your word. And the Malach departed from her. So, this is Matthew Yahuwah 118. Now the birth of Yahuwah took, Husha took place in this way. When his mother Marim had been, been betrothed to Yusuf, before they came together, she found to be with child from the Kudash Ruach. And her husband, Yusuf, being a just man and unwilling to, to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as she considered these things, behold, the Malak of Yahuwah appeared to him in a dream, saying, Yusuf, son of Daud, do not fear. What is he coming in the dream world? My, he says, do not fear to take your, marry your wife, for that which is conceived to her is of the Kudash Ruach. She will bear a son, and you will call his name Yahushua, for, his, for, he, for he will save his people from their sins. Huh? And all this took place to fulfill what Yahuwah had spoken by the Nabi. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. You shall call his name Emmanuel. The father of gods with us. The everlasting father, the prince of peace, shall sit on the throne. Shalom. Which means Allahim with us. When Yusuf woke, that the land where Allahim is here, woke from his sleep, he did not See, he did as the Malak of Yahuwah had commanded him, and he took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Yahushua, Yahuwah's salvation. This is the Aquarian truth of Yahushua, Mashiach, 
chapter 3, 1 through 4. The time was near and due for Yahushua to be born. And Marim loved, loved, longed to see Eliashiba, and she and Yusuf turned their faces forward to the Judean hills. And when upon their way they came to Bethlehem, the day was done that they must tarry for the night. Where are we at now? We're at night time. But Bethlehem was thronged with people going to Jerusalem. And the inns and the homes were filled with guests. And Yusuf, because it was time for the feast, right? And it says, And Yusuf and his wife could not find no place to rest but in a cave where animals were kept. Some have manger, some have a place where animals, but it says a cave. Amazingly, well, Adam was in a cave of treasures. But he says, it says, And they, and there they, they slept. And they were in the hill country. When we talked about Selah, the hillside, the ridges, he said he cool was like the hillside. Verse 4 says, At midnight came a cry. Huh? Wasn't it a cry at midnight in Mizraim? And the firstborn all died? Because you know why all the firstborn died? Because the, 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 the child that's going to be born to destroy all the kings. This has just been born. And amazingly, they were in the house at night. Just like the Nimru and all of them were in the house that night. And amazingly, Abram was being born that night. And it troubled them from all the signs they were seeing. And it says, And the child was born in the yonder cave among the beasts. And lo, the promised son was born, and strangers took a little one and wrapped him in a dainty robe. And Mary had prepared and laid him in a trough which, which beasts of burden fed. Why do you think Yahushua says, Come unto me all that heavy laden and burdened? I'll give you rest. Take your yoke upon me and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly, and you'll find rest for your soul. They were in the burden trough. It was burden fed. They were literally in there. He was made to be eaten. Matter of fact, he was, he was born to die. Why do you think they were telling him, pay the, pay, find the father, and we can pay the father money, and we can slay him? He says, three persons clad in, sh in sh clad in show white robes came in and stood before the child and said, Strength, all wisdom, all love, be yours, Emmanuel, Allahim with us, the Father of gods, the everlasting Father, the Son of Yahuwah, the Father of gods, the Allahim of Allahims. Luke or Yah 1 6 ESV. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her son, firstborn son, and wrapped him in swallowing clothes and laid him in the manger, because there was no place for them to in the inn. Right? The word for manger is eating, a fodder, a manger stall, a fodder. And to eat, a crib. A fodder is a food, especially dry, hay, feed for livestock. It would lie inside of a manger. It was made for it to be eaten. It was made for them to be eaten. What was the food that Adam was supposed to give the, give the animals? He's supposed to give them plants. Every herb beauty seed, the seed was supposed to be for food and for the animals. So what do you think Yahushua is being represented right there? The plants that the animals were supposed to eat. Because that's what they were supposed to eat. Because Yahuwah never spoke to them concerning no animal sacrifices for sin. Amazing when he became, he was born as a child by the Ruach Hakadosh. He went and when he got here to the earth, he said, "You supposed to abide, abide in Shamar the garden." And he was born right into the thing. He was he was born into the servant too of giving the animal food. He was born right into it because right? Yahuwah never spared him. Matthew Yahu two, two and one. Now after Yahushua was born in Bethlehem in Yahuda in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem. Huh? Where are they coming from? From from Sumer, Babylon. From the east. They coming from. They say they came from the east to Jerusalem. They came from the actual city. And it says, saying, "Where is the one who was born, the king of the Yahudim? For we saw his star when it arose, and it came. We came to worship him. Because what do they worship? They they are they are star worshippers. They worship Orion. They worship Oranos. They worship the." the this Ursa Major, Ursa Minor. They worship the sun, moon, and the stars. They come to see the child in one. Isn't that the same thing to the channelers did for Nimru? 
they saw this comet going in the air and they saw it devour four stars and then they said that's Abram's child they interpreted it and he's going to destroy all the kings and they're like Let, let's go worship him and when Herod the king heard this he was troubled just like Nimrod and now you see what type of gods he worshipped he don't worship Yahuwah now you see the type of gods Herod worshipped And it says what? And he was troubled in all Jerusalem with him. Now you see the type of gods they serve. They worship the sun, moon, they worship the cuckoo bean, they worship Orion. Wow, calling on Yahuwah, which means that they were taking the facade with other gods. They were taking facade with other gods. It says, and assembling the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired, or even he inquired of the spirit channels, of them where Mashiach was born. Same thing Nimrud did. And they told him, in Bethlehem Yehuda, for so it is written in the Nabi. And you, O Bethlehem, the land of Yehuda, are by no means least among the rulers of Yehuda, for from you shall come a ruler who shall shepherd my people, Yasharal. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. <laughs> they want to know what time the star appeared. Ain't that what the, they mastered the astrologers. They mastered the, the constellations. They said, what time did that star appear? Because you can Because remember, the stars were given for days, months, years, and times, and solstices. It was all made for men. And he sent them to Bithlacom, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. And after listening to the king, they, they went on their way, and behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest in the place where the child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy, and going into the house, they saw the child and Marim and his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. And then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. Why? Because Herod won't kill the child. Just like, just like Nimrod. Just like Satan, when they came in, and Satan was like, kill him. Because you see the type of God in Nimrod, Nimrod like, or you see Nimrod like, he going to take my throne? Herod like, he going to take my throne? That ain't going to happen. I'm going to kill that child. That's the type of God he served. He served other gods. He, they have him lies in their heart. And notice who he inquiring of. These ain't, these ain't men of, of Jerusalem. He inquiring of men on the, on the other side, on some other place. Magi. I told you, he was saying, the people that are going to recognize you are the people who look at the constellation. It says, verse 13, it says, And now when they had departed, to behold, and Malak of Yahuwah appeared to Yusuf in a dream and said, Rise and take the child and his mother to Mizraim and remain there until I tell, thee, tell them. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Oh, you mean that's a demon? Because the demons are created to what? To destroy. That's a Shadim on the inside of him. And he arose and took the child and his mother by night and departed to Mizraim and remained there until death of Herod. This was fulfilled that, that what Yahuwah had spoken by the Nabi, out of Mizraim I called my son. Huh? Oh, you mean out of Mizraim I called my son? He said, I brought you out of the land of Mizraim out of the house of bondage. Oh, and when I brought you out, I never spoke to you concerning eating animal flesh. You, so you telling me when he brought Yahushua, told him out of Mizraim I called my son, and when he came back to Jerusalem, you telling me he came there to eat flesh? You telling me he came there to do everything opposite of what he told him in the garden, to work it and keep it, and to eat plants of the earth and the fruits and the animals also? I don't think so. I don't think so. Actually, I know so. Right? This is Luke Oriya 2, 8 through 18. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And it says, and the Malachi Yahuwah appeared to them 
and the cabal of Yahuwah shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the Malachi Mark said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news and great joy that, that will be for all people. For unto you a, is born this day the city of Daoud, a Savior who is Mashiach Yahuwah, Yahushua, or Mashiach Yahushua. And this will be a sign, huh, for you. It's going to be a sign. Who taught the signs in the earth? They taught the fall of Malachi. They taught the signs in the earth. And guess what he said? The angels taught it. Malachi. He said, it's going to be the sign for you. Because you got to seek for a sign. You will find a baby, baby wrapped in swallowing clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was the Malak. There was with the Malak a multitude of heavenly Shamayim hosts praising Yahuwah, saying, Kabul to Yahuwah in the highest. Higher Shamayim, the earth and the and on earth. Shalom among those with whom he is pleased. Because Yahuwah is the higher frequency or the major frequency, and the earth is the minor frequency. And when the Malachim went away from them into Shamayim, the shepherds said one to another, Let us go to come and see whether this thing has happened. They like, let's go see if this thing is real. Because you know, like Charles say, if it be us or any of the Malachi teaching any other thing, let him be a curse. He's like, let's go see for ourselves. Because you know, everybody say a whole bunch of stuff. We don't know if it's true or not. It says, which Yahuwah has made known to us. And they went in with haste and found Mary and Yusuf and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the same that had been told concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherd told them. They wondered. They found it just like it was. They were like, it's just like Sherman Wall said, everything he said, it happened just like he said. You can not 12, 1, 24 to 32. Uh, yeah, 21, 24, 32. Now, they had been sent to the Pharisees, they asked him. And he says, now they had been sent for, from the Pharisees, they asked him, then why are you immersing? If you are neither Mashiach or al Yahu, nor the Nabi, you can not answer them. I immerse with water, but among you stands one you do not know, even the, who comes after me, the strap whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. Because what's going to happen if you untie his sandal? You're going to see his regard. You're going to see at the bottom of his feet. Oh, you mean the bottom of Orion? He's like, man, man, I'm going to see his bottom of him and see his regard. These things took place in Bethany across Yardan where Yahukanon was immersing. The next day, he saw Yahushua coming toward him. And he said, Behold, the saw, the saw, the say, the saw of Yahuwah, who takes away the sin of the world. Oh, you mean a father of the Allah, he followed God, whose sandal strap, who has the regal at his feet. I'm not, I'm not even unworthy to tie. Who takes away the sin of the world. He said, who's going to break the bands of Orion? Who's going to break the belt of Orion? Can you loose the band, belt, the belt of Orion? Can you do that? This is he whom I said, after me comes a man who ranks before me, because he was before me. I myself did not know him. But for this purpose I came immersing the water that he might be revealed to Yashara. And you cannot bore witness. I saw the Ruach descend from Shamaim like a dove, and it remained on him. It stayed on him. He like, it stayed on him. He said, that's the Lamb of Yahuwah. You cannot 6, 41 to 59. So the Yahudim grumbled against him because he said, I am the bread which came down from Shamayim. He said, eat it with bread. The matzah. He said, who's going to break the bands of Orion? He said, who's going to loose the cords of Orion on you? He said, his sandal strap, I ain't worthy to fear. Matter of fact, he the say of Yahuwah. He the father of God, Allahim's. And he bringing bread. And guess what the people are? Bitter. That's why they grumbling. They bitter. They said, is this not this Yahushua, the son of Yusuf, whose father and mother we know? How does he say, how does he now say, I have come down from Shamayim? Yahushua answered them, do not grumble among yourselves. Don't be bitter. No one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up in the last day. <laughs> Nobody can come to me except the father who sent me draw him, and I will raise him up in the last day. Why do you think the Magi came to, he's like, they came to him? Because the father sent and drawed them to him. Why didn't the shepherds went to go see him? Because the father drawed them to him. 
he said, it's written in Naveen. They will all be taught of Yahuwah, by Yahuwah. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father returns to the Son. Come to the Son. Because if you go to Yahuwah, you're going to come to the Son. Not that anyone has seen this Father, except he who is from Yahuwah. He has seen the he. He has seen the Father. Truly, I truly I say to you, whoever believes in me has eternal life. I'm the bread, I'm the matzah of life. Why are you telling me to eat it with bitter herbs? Eat it with matzah, with your sandals on your feet and your staff in your hand. Because if you eat it, I'm gonna pass over you. I'm gonna pass over you, and I'm not gonna destroy you. And I'm not gonna allow it into your body. For the father ate the manna in the wilderness and they died because they had gods in their heart. They still had the gods in their heart and they ate it unworthily. Some have, he said, if you eat this breast and eat this blood unworthily, some have died, some are asleep, and some have perished, and some have gotten sick. For, he says, I am the living bread which came down from Shamaim. If anyone eats this bread, he will live forever. This bread. And the bread which I give for my life in the world is my what? Is my flesh. Make sure you eat this, eat it with bitter herbs, with, with how you say, bitter herbs with bread, and you eat the flesh. And he said, Behold, the Lamb of Yahuwah will take away the sin of the world. Who's going to break the ban of Orion? The Sop, the Father of Gods, on your life. Who's going to get you to stop worshiping the gods of the earth? That's why he's here. The Yahudim then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Because you know how it is. He can't give us his flesh to eat. We ain't Nephilim. We just read about Nephilim that ate human flesh. They devoured acquisitions of men and mankind. So you just said to them, truly, truly, I said it to you, unless you eat my flesh of uh, the son of Adam and drink my blood, you have no life in you because you've been eating flesh of the animals and consuming all the acquisitions of men. You've been worshiping wood and stone and gold and silver and enchantments and bracelets and all the teachings of Shemjaza. You were worshiping the Ursa Major, Ursa Minor. You were worshiping the sun, moon, and the stars. So I'm telling you, you got to eat my flesh and drink my blood. Because you and Nephilim, that's all y'all been doing. Because I never spoke to you when I brought you out of Mizraim. I never told you to eat about eating, killing animals and eating flesh. I didn't tell Cain that either. Matter of fact, I didn't tell Adam to do that either. And I drove them all out. Garage. garage and I told them not to do none of that. But yet they still, some of them still did it. So I come to redeem man. I come to bring them back to how it was in the beginning. He said, whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise them up in the last day. For my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood abides in, abides in me. And I in him. It means I'll pass over you. It was like I will pass over you. I will not allow the destroyer to destroy you you in this life right? but he's talking about the next life he's talking about the next life right as the living father has sent me and I live because of the father so whoever feeds on my flesh feeds on me he also will live because of me if you just feed on my flesh, right? Right, this is Yuki 9, 8, 54 through 59. You should answer. I could, I could, I, if I glorify myself, my kabod is nothing. It is my father who glorifies me, of whom you say he is our Allahim, but you have not known him. I know him. If I were to say I don't know him, I would be a liar like you. But I know him, and I keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. So the Yahudim said to him, you are not yet 50 years old. And yet you've seen Abraham. Abraham? You said to him, when was Abraham born? Oh, he was, during, he was born during the time of night when they were in the house feasting. And they saw a sign showing, you know, and the child Abraham was born. So he said, Abraham rejoiced to see my day. Abraham would need an heir. He said he needed a child from a miracle. And he was like, when Abraham saw his heir, he said, man, Abraham was glad. You just said to them, truly, truly, I said to you, before Abraham was, I am. He said, before Abraham even existed. So they picked up stones to throw at him. But Yahushua hid himself and went out of the temple. He's like, man, they trying to kill me. Right? But Yahushua 
But he said, I can bowl. He said, if my bowl is nothing. He said, I don't glorify myself. If I glorify myself, my, my, my glory is nothing. It's the Father who do it. So this Yukonon 12, 27 through 33. Now is my soul trouble. What shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. For this purpose, I came into this hour. In this point in time. What's this point in time? It's a, it's, a, it's a night of much watching. It is a night where you, have, where you have to do something. And he said, this is the bread that's came down from Shamayim. He said, I will kabot your name. Then a voice came from Shamayim. I have glorified it, and I'm going to glorify it again. And the crowd that stood there and heard it said, it had thundered. Others said, a malak had spoken to him. Who just said, answer, this voice came for your sake, not mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now will the ruler of this world be cast out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. What's, what's in the cloud? What, what do people stare at? Orion, Regal, Ursa Major, Ursa Major, the bear constellation. He said he's going to eat honey too. They, they stare at the seven stars, the cuckoo bean, the stereo. Electra, the, the he say the the stars, the, the eclipses, <laughs> the comets, the asteroids. He said, "I'm gonna draw all people to me when I'm lifted up in the earth." The sun, the shemesh, who in the yard, they they looking at all that. He said, "But when I'm lifted up, I'm gonna draw all people to me." Yahushua, like they gonna be right back to the Father. Yahuwah Elohim is the Ab to the Ben. I'm the father of all the gods. Verse 33 says, he said this to show a type of death he was going to die. Because he's going to have to die. Because the lamb, the sa, the father of gods, has to break the bands of the other gods and the control and the influences of the Pleiades on people's minds. Of the Kemen, the Ketzil, and the worshiping of other gods and the demons and the Shemjaza. Right? This is truth of the Nazarene. 28, 1 through 4. And it came to pass one day, as Yahushua had finished his discourse in the place near Tiberias, where there were seven wells, huh? And a certain young man brought live rabbits. How many, how many stars in the seven? Oh, seven stars in Pleiades. And amazingly, what do these people do to worship? They eat flesh. They eat flesh. And the young man brought their live rabbits and pigeons that he may have them to eat with his disciples. And Yahushua looked on the young man with compassion and said to him, you have a good heart. Because they have a good heart, like, man. But he don't have no understanding. And Yahuwah shall give you light. He said, the people that sat in darkness, they saw a great light. Because he's in darkness. But do you not know that Yahuwah, your creator, in the beginning gave to man the fruits of the, of the earth for food? Because nobody said it to him. And did not make him lower than the ape and the ox and the horse and the sheep, that he should kill and eat flesh and the blood of his fellow creatures. Isn't that what he told Adam when he came out with Cain and the children of Yasharal? He said, I, I never spoke to these people concerning these things. Indeed, the Pharisees believed Meshach commanded such creatures to be slain and offered and sacrificed and eaten. So, so do you in, the in your temple. But behold, I have come to light the way back to the Torah, even the true Torah, because the people sat in darkness. They see in a great light. Oh, you mean the light that was from the beginning and the first before the cuckoo beam in the yard were even made. And the sun, moon, and the stars, and the people who worship the stars, the seven stars. And Mashah put it, he said, he says, even the true way of Torah of Mashah, to put away blood sacrifices at the in the beginning. Just like he told Cain, he never spake. Just like he told Adam, he never spake. Just like he told the children of Yashara, I never did. Because y'all became mighty hunters like Nimrud. And y'all came like the fallen in Shemjaza. And y'all continue to walk in the ways of demons. So he come to free everybody. And get what he said also, even the sacrifice of grains and fruits of the earth. Why? Because people would sacrifice these to other gods. The, of that which you offer in purity shall, be, shall you eat. For the, for the hour approaches when your sacrifices and feasts of blood shall cease. And you shall worship in Kudash with a pure oblation. He said, it's going to stop. It's going to cease. Luke Oya, 22.1. Now the Feast of Unleavened Bread drew near, which is called the Passover. 
And the chief priests and the scribes were seeking how to put him to death. Wasn't that Nimrod? That was Nimrod, for they feared the people. Then Satan entered into Judas Iscariot. What do you think they were entering into? Balaam and all of them. Who was the number of the twelve. And he went away and conferred with the chief priests and officers how to betray him to them. And they were glad and agreed to give him money. Oh, you mean like pay the father money to put Abram to death? Because they see him in his star in the east. See his star coming across the cloud. And they devoured the four stars. And the rulers, the, the rulership, the leadership, want to destroy him. Because they the hard-hearted king who want to kill their brother. That's the hard-hearted king right there. That whole conglomerate of people are the hard-hearted king who want to kill their brother in the field. So he consented and sought an opportunity to betray him to them in the absence of, the, of a crowd. Right? Mark 14 and 12. And on the first day of unleavened bread, when they sacrificed the Pesach lamb, his disciples said to him, Where will you have us go and prepare for you to eat the Pesach? And he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city to a man carrying a large jar of water and meet you. Large water jar of water will meet you and follow him. And whenever he, wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, the teacher says, where is my guest room? And where is the place? Where is, he said, where I may eat the Pesach with my disciples. And he will show you a large upper room in furnace and ready. They're prepared for us. And the disciples said, out. So he went to the city and found it just as he has told him. It happened just like he said. And they prepared the Pesach. And when it was evening, at night, he came with his twelve and they were reclining at the table. And Yahushua said, truly, I said to you, one of you will betray me and one who is eating with me. Because he has Satan on the inside. And they began to be sorrowful and say to him, one another, is it I? And he said to them, it is one of the twelve. One who is dipping bread in my dish with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe unto the man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better that that man had not been born. He said, it's better that you've been born. Matthew 27, 26, 17. Now on the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Yahushua saying, where is, he said, where should we prepare for Sop? And he said, go to, into the city of a certain man. Right, this is another, another tr translation, different. And she just says, my time is at hand. Because he knows his time is at hand. Because everything's aligned. Because there's going to be an eclipse at this time. There's going to be this at this time. On the 364 day cycle, it's all going to happen all in the sequence. Because everything, nothing just happens. He says, and I will keep the Pesach at your house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Yahushua had directed them. And they prepared the Pesach. And when it was evening, he reclined at the table with the twelve. And as they were eating, he said, truly, I say to you, when are you betray me? And they were sorrowful, and they began to say to him, Is it I? And he answered, He who has dipped his hand in a dish with me and will betray me. The Son of Man goes that is written of him, but woe to the man by whom the Son of Adam is betrayed. Right? right verse 26. Now as they were eating, Yahushua took bread, and after barocking it, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took up, took the, a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them. He says, drink all of it. Drink, drink of it, all of you. For this is the blood of the new covenant, which is poured out on many for forgiveness of sins. For I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it anew in my kingdom. Right? So he took the bread and he broke it and gave it to them. Right? Right? This is Truth in Nazarenes, chapter 75, 4 through 18. Then Judas, the newest member, who did they have a lamb when they were eating the Pesach? We ain't seen no lamb. You ain't see him break no lamb and give it to him. But it says, and Yehuda, newest member, who had not yet been fully initiated into the mysteries, asked, where will you have preserved Pesach? And Yehuda answered, would I desire that at, at all this tea? He said, where will you have me prepare the Pesach? And Yahushua answered, Would I desire at this Pesach to eat flesh with you before I am about to institute the memorial of my oblation for my service for salvation of all? He said, I'm going to get rid of all this stuff. For behold, the hour approaches that the Son of Man will be betrayed into the hands of traitors. And one of the twelve said to him, Yahushua, is it I? And he, and he answered, 
he whom I have give the salt, the same as he. And the scared, Yehuda said to him, Yehusha, behold, the unleavened bread mingled with wine and the oil and the herbs, right? Now you see it. But where is the lamb that Meshach commanded? Because <laughs> it was only for the view of that one generation. Because he never spoke to them concerning animal sacrifice as they left Mizraim. But Yehuda had brought the lamb. He's like, he brought the lamb because he had animal flesh eating. Which means he it's easy for Satan to get inside his body. And being that it's easy for him to get inside his body, it's easy for him to, to coerce him with money. It's easy for him to take control of your mind. But Yahushua had forbidden it that it should be killed. Why? Because Yahuwah never told him in the beginning to kill any animals and eat flesh. He forbid it. And Yahuwah spoke in the Ruach saying, Behold the Lamb of Yahuwah, the Good Shepherd, which gives his life for the sheep. And Yehuda was troubled at these words. <laughs> Just you see what type of gods they serve. That's the same thing Nimrud was, the same thing Pharaoh was, the same thing Herod was. He like, <laughs> they were troubled. Because he's talking about, ain't no lamb. For he knew that he should betray him. He like, man, he know. He the lamb and I got to betray this man. But again, Yehuda, it didn't matter what he did. But again, Yehuda said to Yehusha, is it not written in the Torah that a lamb must be slain for the Pesach within the gates? Verse 8 said, and Yehusha answered, you have walked with me even this short time, and yet you ask me this? If I am lifted up on the cross, then indeed shall the lamb be slain. But woe to him by whom it is delivered into the hands of the slayer. It were better that he had not been born. Verily I say unto you, for this end have I come into the world, that I may put away the blood offers and eating of flesh of the beasts and the birds that are slain by men. In the beginning, the Creator gave all the fruits and the trees of the seeds of the herbs for food. But those who love themselves more than Yahuwah, hmm? Those who love themselves more than Yahuwah or their fellow corrupted their ways and brought diseases into their bodies because that's where Satan comes in. Remember, if you ain't got the, le if you ain't had the, if you ain't obey Yahuwah after you left Mizraim, then the diseases came into your body. Because where did they get the disease in their body from? From eating flesh. He said, if you obey all my commandments, he I'll put none of the diseases on you that I put on Mizraim. But then they stopped doing the things that Yahuwah told them to do. He because I never expect you eating animal flesh and killing animal sacrifices. They got diseases in their body. And filled the earth with lust and violence and kamas. That's what happened in the beginning with Shemjaza. Same thing they did in the beginning. And that's why they, they consumed animals, flesh, and they consumed the acronyms of men, and they started eating and biting and devouring each other. And that's what Judah's doing. He getting ready to bite and devour Yahushua, but not even knowing. He said, if you don't eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. Verse 11 says, not by shedding innocent blood thereof, but by living in righteous life shall a man find shalom. That's how you're going to find it. Verse 12 says, Yahushua said, skipping, uh, yeah. Verse 12 says, in the same book, walking away, he said, walking away, you shall find the most high and seek truth, and the truth shall make you free. Live in, live in the life as you shall live in the life, and you shall not see death. All things are, are alive and in the Ruach of the Creator, who fills all things. Keep the commandments, love you with all your heart, love your neighbors yourself, even all things. On these things hangs the law of the Nabim, and the sum of the law is this. Do unto others that you have them do unto you. Barak are they who keep the law, for the Creator is manifest in all creatures, and all creatures live in the Creator. Verse 15, after these things, Yahushua dipped the sop and gave it to Judas Iscariot, saying, what you do, what you will do. He said, man, do it quickly, do it in haste. It's the who is Pesach. You gotta do this thing fast. What you waiting on? He then, having received the sop, went out immediately, and it was night. <laughs> this is a night much remembered. Didn't it what the Magi did when the child was born? They, but what did they do? They rose up and they were like, man, we got to give this man some money so we can kill him. Right? He, they said, verse 16, and when Judas Iscariot had gone out, Yahushua said, now is the son of man, Kabod, among the twelve, and Yahuwah is Kabod in him. And verily I say unto you, they who receive you, receive me. And they who receive me, receive the most high Yahuwah who sent me. To you who follow me in the regeneration of the elect, I appoint the kingdom, and at the same time has been appointed to me. And you have been faithful to the truth 
shall sit upon the twelve thrones judging the twelve tribes of Yashrael. And one said to him, Yahushua, will you at this time restore the kingdom, Yash kingdom to Yashrael? And Yahushua said, to the, said the king, my kingdom is not of this world. <laughs> my kingdom ain't Babylon, Nimru, Mizraim, Cush. He said, my kingdom ain't of this world. Neither are all Yashrael, which are called Yashrael. They are those, even a nation, who defile not themselves with cruelty, who do, who do righteousness and have mercy and love and reverence, all the, work, all the works of the law, who succor all that are weak and oppressed, the same are true Yasharal. He said, that's true Yasharal. You can on 13, 5 through 30. We're going to skip through some of this, but it says, Now, before the Feast of Passat, when Yahushua knew the hour was coming to depart out of this world, right? having loved his own, he says, he says having to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During the supper, when Satan had already put into the heart of Yehuda, Simon's son, to betray him, Yahushua, knowing that the Father had given him, given all things into his hand, and that he had come from Yahuwah, and was going back to you, rose from supper, he laid aside his outer garments and taking a towel and tied on his waist. Then he poured water in a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. And he came to Simon, who said to him, Adon, do you wash my feet? And who should answer him? What am I, what I am doing, you do not understand now, but afterwards you will understand. Kaf said to him, You shall never wash my feet. You shall answer him, If I do not wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Kaf said to him, Adon, not my feet only, but my hands and my feet. You shall have said to him, The one who has bathed does not need to wash, except his feet, but, uh huh, except his feet, but it's complete, he said, But except his feet be completely clean. And you are clean, but not every one of you, for he knew who was betrayed him. That was why he said, not all are clean. And when he had washed their feet, he put the outer garments and resumed his place. And he said to them, do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and master, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your master and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. Truly I say to you, as a servant is no greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, because you got people on earth think they're greater than the one who sent. And he says, Barak are you, if you do them. I am not speaking to all of you. I know whom I have chosen, but the scripture will be fulfilled. He who ate my bread has lifted up his heel against me, Cain. He said, he who has ate my bread, right? Because once wants to eat the bread and eat the herbs and eat the, the, eat the meal, then Satan enters into you if you don't have the blood, if you don't believe. And then guess what happens? If you already have him in your heart, he said, he gonna manifest. He said, I am telling you this now before it takes place. That when it, go, when it does take place, you may believe that I am he. Truly I say to you, whoever receives the one I, I send receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. You should, you could, Matthew 26 and 30 through 46, and when they had sung a hymn, he went to the Mount of Olives. Then Yahushua said to them, you will all fall away because of this, me this night, because this night be much remembered. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the, and the, she and the sheep will flock, will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go to you in Galilee. And Cobb said, though you, he said, though they all fall away because of you, I will never fall away. He just said to him, truly I tell to you, this very night, before the rooster crows, before the sun comes up, when it, before the sun get ready to come up, you will deny me three times. Cobb said to him, even I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples said the same. Then Yahushua went with them to the place called Gethsemane, and he said to, to his disciples, sit here while I go there to pray. And taking with him Kav 
and his two sons Ebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. And then he said to them, my soul is sorrowful and even unto death. Remain here and watch with me, because this is a night of much watching. And going a little further, he fell on his face and prayed, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will, but, your, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. He said, watch under prayer, right? And he said, the cop, so you could not watch me for one hour? It's a night of month watching. Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation, that you may not go into something, temptation with Satan. And the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, for the second time, he went away and prayed, my father, it cannot pass, my, my, my father, if this cannot pass, huh, unless I drink it, your will be done. He said, if, you don't, if this can't pass over me, because he's not in his house. Because you're supposed to be in your house and you're supposed to leave. And he said, this, ain't, this is not going to pass over me, because if it's not gonna, he's not going to get passed over, I mean the firstborn child getting ready to die. He getting ready to die. And again, he came to and found them sleeping. For there, their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away to pray a third time, saying the same words again. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, sleep and take your rest later on. Huh? The hour is at hand. The son of Adam is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. He said, my... He said, I've been betrayed into the hands of flesh eater, idol worshiper, sun, moon, and stars, sold their soul to the king to slay me, people. Ready? It's the last of this part. And it says, Yehuchina 18, 1 through 14. And after Yahusha had spoken these things, these words, he went with his disciples across Kidron to the valley where there was a garden. Huh? So when Adam was in the garden, what happened? Yehuchina had him in the garden, and what happened? He gave him his punishment. He said, every herb you see is going to be for food. He gave him his punishment. And then what happened? Now Judas, his betrayer, also knew the place because Yahushua had often met there with his disciples. And now Judas brought a band of soldiers, officers, and chief priests of the Pharisees, and they arrived at the garden carrying lanterns and torches and weapons. What did, what did Yahuwah have in the garden before he drove Adam out of the garden? He had a flaming sword, and he had a torches of fire. And where do you have a flaming sword and torches at? At night. That's how you know when Adam was cast out of the garden, it was at night. It's a night to be much remembered. Because when Yahuwah cast Adam out of the garden, he never spoke to him concerning the animal sacrifices to sin. Why do you think Yahushua being an animal, a animal getting ready to be killed in the garden? He getting, he getting taken right out of the garden to be killed. And amazingly, he getting taken out of the garden to be killed with flaming torches. And what happens when you go out of the garden? You're supposed to work it and keep the garden. What do you think he's doing right here? They got flaming swords and they get ready to take him out of the garden. But what did he tell Cain? He said, he said, man, everybody gonna see me. Man, they gonna kill me when he cast him out. He garroshed him out of his presence. But then what did he say? He said, everybody who touched you, sevenfold gonna come on them. Verse 4 says, And Yahushua, knowing all that was coming upon him, because he knew it, stepped forward and asked him, Whom are you seeking? Yahushua of Nazareth. They, they answered, and Yahushua said, I am he. And Judas, his betrayer, was standing there with him. And when Yahushua said, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. They fell, they fell to the ground like, like the princes when they saw the star climbing in the, in the sky. They fell to the ground, just like he, the, the Magi saw him coming. And they fell to the ground and worshipped him. They have no choice. So he asked them again, Whom are you seeking? Yahushua of Nazareth. They answered, I told you I am here. And Yahushua replied, So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the, the word he had spoken. I have lost not one of those who have, you have given me. Then Simon coughed through his sword and struck off the servant of Hakon's priest, cutting off his ear. And the servant's name was Malchus. Put your sword back in your sheath, Yahushua said. Shall I not drink of the cup my father has given me? Then the band of soldiers with the commanders and the officers and the Yahudim arrested Yahushua and bound him. And they brought him to the first the Ananias, the father of Caiaphas, the high Kahan that year. And Caiaphas was one of the ones that advised the Yahudim. It would be better that one man should die for the people. How many sacrifices, Pesach it is? 
It's only one facade. You're only supposed to do it at one time. This is the only time you're supposed to eat a lamb. For future generations, never again. Right, he came to light the way back. This is Talim Psalms 59 through 50. I will not accept a bull of your house and the goats of your foes. For every beast of the forest is mine and the cattle of a thousand hills. I own the cattle of a thousand hills. I know all the birds of the hills and, the, and moves in the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, Judas. For the world is mine and the food is, fullness are mine. Do I eat flesh of the, of the bulls or drink the blood of goats? Am I a Nephilim demon? Shadim? Made from the intercourse of fallen Malachi? Are you going to say that about Yahuwah? That's my image and likeness? I don't think so. Offer you to Yahuwah, sacrifice of thanksgiving, and perform your vows to your most high Yahuwah, and call upon me in a day of trouble, and I will deliver you, and, and you shall kabod me. You say, this Deuteronomy Deuter 4, 15 to 30. Therefore, watch yourselves very carefully. Since you saw no form on the day Yahuwah spoke to you in Horeb in the midst of the fire, beware that you act corruptly by making carved images for yourselves in the form of a figure of a likeness of male and female, that's Adam and Kool, you know, that's you had in the beginning, likeness of any animal on the earth, that's in the beginning, likeness of any winged bird, that's in the beginning, and it flies, and all the likeness of every creepy thing that creeps on the ground, and on the likeness of anything and the fishes in the water of the earth, because these are all things you're supposed to have dominion over, not worship and eat. They ain't supposed, to eat milk. They ain't supposed to eat human beings either. Because when the day when I brought you out of Mizraim, I never spake to you concerning animal sacrifices and eating flesh. The likeness, it says the likeness of any fish that is in the water under the earth. And beware, now after all that, I'll put you over that. I gave you authority and dominion. Now I punished you and I put you in authority like the Shemesh in the ark. Now guess what? And beware, lest you raise your eyes to Shemaim. So don't eat those, don't destroy those, don't make any likeness, don't, don't work any idols, because if you make an idol of it, you're going to eat it. And beware, because remember, Yahushua said, eat my flesh and drink my blood. Because when you make an idol, a wooden stone, you're going to eat animals. You're going to eat them. So Yahushua like, eat me. I'm alive. Eat me. And beware, lest you raise your eyes to the Shamaims, and when you see the sun, the Shamash, the, the Yark, and the Kukabim, and all the hosts of the Shamaims, you are drawn away to bow down to them and serve them. That's why the Malachi, like, when the book of Kazun, he said he, he saw the man who revealed all that, and he went to bow down and worship him, he said, see that you don't do that. For I'm your fellow brothers who, keep, who are servants of the Yahuwah. Worship Yahuwah. Don't worship me. Don't put me in no song. Don't worship me. Don't give all praise to me. He said, you bow down to them and serve them. That's what people do today. As above and in the cuckoo being, they do it, and below. Human beings, they do it. They do it to other human beings. Things that Yahuwah, your Elohim, has allotted to all the people under Shamaim, the whole Shamaim. He's like, man, I gave these things for them to to, to, to Days, months, years, and times, not to worship, nor to serve them. But Yahuwah has taken you and brought you out of the iron furnace of Mizraim. I brought you out of that. I broke the bands of Orion. I broke the PA. I, 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 I said, I stopped the influences of the, of the seven stars, the Pleiades. I brought you out of the land of Cush, out of the family of Ham, to be a people of his own inheritance as you are this day. Right? Amos 5, 4 through 10. For thus says Yahuwah, the, the house of Yasharal, to the house of Yasharal, seek me and live. But do not seek Bethal, do not enter Gilgal, or cross Bishaba. For Gilgal shall surely go into exile, and Bethal shall come to nothing. Seek Yahuwah and live, lest he break out like fire in the house of Yusuf. And it devours the one who quenches, and it says it devours with none to quench it for Bethal. O ye who turn justice into wormwood and cast righteousness to the earth. He who made the Pleiades, Akima, and Orion, and turns the deep darkness into the morning and darkens the day into night. Because that's the first thing we talked about. Can you, you know the storehouses of darkness and day? Can you 
bind Anam, the Kima? Can you break the cord of Ketil, Orion? He said, I can do that. Who calls for the, the waters of the sea and pours them on the surface of the earth. Yahuwah is his name, the father of gods. That's why he sent his son, Yahushua, the lamb of Yahuwah, to take away the sin of the world. And this is a night to be much remembered. Who makes destruction flash forth against the strong, so that destruction comes upon the fortress. They hate him who reproves in the gate. <laughs> Yahushua's like, man, they hated me without a cause. And they abhor him who speaks the truth. He was like, he hated me without a cause. This is Bereshit 28 and 10. And he came to a certain place and he stayed there that night. This is a night to be much remembered. Because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head. It lay down in the place to sleep. Where were they praying at? They were in the garden. They were sleeping on the ground where Yahushua was. And he dreamed. And behold, there was a ladder set up on the earth. And the top of it reached the Shamaim. And behold, the Malachim of Yahuwah were ascending and descending on it. And behold, Yahuwah stood above it and said, I am Yahuwah, the Elohim of Abraham, your father, the Elohim of Yitzhak, the land that you lie, the land on which you lie, I will give to you and your offspring. Your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad from the west to the east to the north to the south, and you and your offspring shall all the family of the earth be brought. Behold, I am with you, and I will keep you wherever you go, and bring you back to the land for which I, I will not leave. He said, bring you back to the land, for I will not leave you until I have done I have done what I have promised you. Then Yaqob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely Yahuwah is in this place. And I did not know it. He was like, Man, surely Yahuwah in this place. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place? What do you mean, how awesome is this place? He said, If Yahuwah is in this place, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of Yahuwah. And this is the gate of Shamayim. So what's the house of Yahuwah? He said, this is the house of Yahuwah. Right there where for stone is a bin. A bin. You got the Ab, the Aleph, and the Bayit, and the, and, the, and the bin. The bin and the noon. It was, it was the eight. Oh. Emmanuel. Emmanuel equals the eight. The Sa equals the eight. The stun equals the eight. The stone. The Father and the Son, the Father of Gods, Yahushua Mashiach, Emmanuel, Allahim with us, equals to eight. It all equals to eight. Yahuwah equals to eight. The bar equals to eight. Yahuwah equals to eight. Mazon balances all that. Naba. Right? But it says cornerstone, a precious stone. The Father and the Son. The Father and the Son. 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 32. For I received from Yahuwah, from the Master, what I also delivered to you, that the Master Yahushua on this night, when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in rem remembrance of me, Zakar. In the same way, he took this cup after the supper and saying this cup is a new covenant of my blood do this do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup you proclaim Yahuwah's death until he comes is Yahushua here yet whoever therefore eats the bread and drinks this cup of Yahuwah unworthily in a manner was guilty of the concerning the blood of Yahushua of the master, let a person examine himself. Then so eat the bread and drink the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body, eats and drinks judgment on himself. Why? Because they're eating it with other things, other gods, all the behavior, all the things that you just read about. He said, he's drinking judgment on himself. What brought judgment on the people of Mizraim? They had the gods in their heart. So when they wrote this letter to First Corinth, they were worshiping the mighty hunter, the Greek. Hunter, they were worshiping that. They were worshiping the hunter, the seven stars. They were worshiping Ursa Major, Mercy Minor. They were worshiping the Pegasus Galaxy. They were worshiping Mercury, Mars, and Venus. They were worshiping other gods. 
they had them in their heart. Right? He said, you get judgment on yourself. My stomach is going to come in you. This is why some of you are weak. Because it's called the devourer, the consumer. Shaka. Right? It, it, it destroys you. It makes you ill. Because it destroys you. And some have died. Why? Because it, it destroys you. So you think he's talking about bread and water and food? It's a similar to. But it just shows you the fear of Yahuwah. But when you are, it says, but if we are, we judge, but it says you have died. But if we judge ourselves truly, we should not be judged. But when we are judged by Yahuwah, we are disciplined so that we may not be condemned along with the world. So either way it go, we judge ourselves right or improperly, Yahuwah still disciplines us because no, no discipline is, is a, to feel good, but if you, he deals with you as a son. But he said you condemn to the world, right? Right, this is Psalms 51, 10 through 17. Create in me a clean heart, O Yahuwah, renew in me the right rule up within me. Why? Because there are other spirits. Cast me not away from your presence. Isn't that what he did to Cain? In Adam? And take not you Kadash Ruach from me. Restore to me the joy of salvation and uphold me in your willing Ruach. Teach me, then I will teach transgressors, transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from blood guiltness. All the animals are eating killed. O Yahuwah, O Yahuwah, my salvation, my tongue will sing aloud of your righteousness. O Yahuwah, my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. For you will not have no delight in sacrifices, or I will give it. He don't care about that. You will not be pleased with a burnt offering. The sacrifice of Yahuwah are a broken ruach and a contrite heart. O Yahuwah, you will not despise. He's like, you ain't gonna. This is Deuteronomy, uh, Dabri Hayami, 2 Chronicles 29 and 3. In the first year, in the first reign, in the first month, he opened the doors of the house of Yahuwah and he repaired them. And he brought the priests in, right? But go to the uh, yeah, priests and Levites and assembled them in the square of the east and said to them, Hear me, Levites and priests. What? Now consecrate yourselves in the house of Yahuwah. Then he said, Yahuwah said, This is not nothing in the house of Yahuwah. This father and the son. This is their bend. He laid on the stone. And his mind was laid, his head was laid on the stone. Which means his mind is the house of Yahuwah. And when Satan enters your senses, then he be, it becomes his house. Acts hard hearted Cain. Who slew his brother. For our father have been unfaithful and have done what is evil in your sight. Of Yahuwah, Allahim. They have forsaken him and have turned away their faces from the habitation of Yahuwah and turned their backs. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Kudash Ruach within you, whom you have from the Father, and you are not your own? For you were bought with a price. So Kabot Yahuwah in your body. 1 Corinthians 3, 17 to 21. If anyone destroys your, Yahuwah's temple, Yahuwah will destroy him. For Yahuwah's temple is Kudash, and you are that temple. Let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you thinks he is wise in his age, let him become a fool that he may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is folly with Yahuwah. For it is written, because it's the wise in their craftiness. And again, Yahuwah knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are worthless. So let no one boast in men. Hebrews 13, 10 through 16. We have an altar from which those who serve the tent have no right to eat. For the bodies of those animals whose blood is brought into the Gadash place by the high priest as a sacrifice for sin are burnt outside the camp. That's why Adam and Kuhu, where was Adam at? In the, in the, in the presence of Yahuwah. Where was Cain at? In the presence of Yahuwah. So Yahushua also suffered outside the gate. Why do you think he told him when he sent him out? He told him to work it and keep it. Thorns and thistles are going to yield you. He suffered outside the gate. Therefore, let us go to him outside the camp and bear the reproach he endured. For here we have no lasting city, for we seek a city to come. Through him, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise. We have no lasting city. Where would, where would King they build all these cities? He said, we don't have no lasting city. They all built lasting cities. He suffered outside the camp. Do not neglect to do good and, and, what, and share what you have. For such sacrifices are pleasing to your whore. So that's what I'm doing. I'm sharing what I got. Yahuwah, that is the fruit of the lips, right? That, it says, do not neglect to do good and share what you have. 
the sac sacrifices are pleasing to Yahuwah. Yahuwah, Yahuwah, Yahusha, that is, the fruits of the lips, the acknowledgement of his name. Right, acknowledging his name, right? So this is Nazarene actually the Shadow King about demons give power over men. Therefore, demons, as we have said, just said, when once they have been able, by means of opportunities afforded them to convey themselves through base and evil actions into the bodies of men, women, and children, if they remain in them a long time by their own negligence, like Cain, because they do not seek out what is profitable for their inner being, and necessarily through them in the future fulfill the desires of the demons who dwell in them. But what is worse, at the end of the age, when the demons are co signed to ageless fire and necessity to rule up, also that obeyed him will be torches and ageless fires together with his body it has polluted. Right? If you, it allows you to stand your body. First, Yokinah 2 24 to 27. Let what you heard from the beginning abide in you. If what you've heard from the beginning abide in you, you too will abide in the Son, the Ab, and in the Father. And this is the promise he has made to us eternal life. I write these things about those who are trying to deceive you. But the anointing you are receiving him, from him abides in you. You have no need that anyone should teach you. You got all these things that's trying to deceive you. All these things in the sun, moon, and the stars, the cuckoo bean, both male and female spirits. But as his anointing it teaches you about everything, and it's true, it is no lie, just that it has taught you, abide in him. This is about in him. You being the Ben and in the Father, the Father and the Son, the Father of Allahim with us. The stone that would build you the precious cornerstone. And you'll lay your head on it, and you'll be safe. Oli E Shaloma, Oli E 1 through 7. The sprinkling of Yahuwah overshadowed me with, with serenity, and it caused a cloud of Shalom to stand over my head. Because he's the Prince of Peace, the everlasting Father that it might guard me at all times and become my salvation to me. Everyone who was disturbed and afraid when they, when they flowed from them and, what, and their flow from them, smoke and judgment. They wanted to kill me. But I was tranquil in Yahuwah's legion. More than the shade was he to me and more than the foundation. And I was carried like a child by its mother and he gave me milk, the dew of Yahuwah. And I grew strong in his favor and he rested in my perfection. Why? Because he said, you're, del you're delighting this more than any delightful food. Why? Because the Eub said, I'm going to put Yahuwah before any delightful food. Why? Because if I do that, then guess what? I'm putting him before all things. Verse 7 says, and I extended my hand. Yeah, I know you don't like, I know, I know that. Yeah, goodness. And I extended my hand in the ascent of, my, of myself, and I directed myself near the Most High Yahuwah. And I, saved, and I was saved near him. Near him. I was saved near him. Right? I was saved right next to him. Right? Just like a father, a child holding on to his father's leg. I'm right next to him. He said, I'm right next to him. This first Enoch, Aleph, Hanuk, 5, 1 through 3. I observed how the trees cover themselves with the greens of the leaves and bear fruit. Right? I've seen that through all the four seasons. The first portal, third portal, fourth portal, and sixth portal. Through the, through the four transition times, all the way through early summer, late summer, early winter, late winter. And I've seen all the trees and all the foliages and all the trees that don't lose their foliage. I walked through the forest and I seen the trees and the balsam trees and the juniper trees and the pine trees that don't lose their foliage. I seen the trees and I see the ones that wither and the ones that die. I seen how the leaves fall on the ground and they bear fruit. And I see how the ones spring up and the ones who sprout during the first month at the turning of the seasons when the sun reaches clip the plenty. I seen it. I watched the cuckoo beam in the yard and I saw how the stars appeared and how they moved and how they, how they jetted and how some stayed in one spot. And guess what happens? Now observe all of this and learn how he who lives forever has made all these for you. How his works are before him in every year that comes. And all his works serve him. They all of them serve him and are not changed. None of these seasonal cycles are changed. They ain't going to change. There are trees on the earth older than us. There are roots in the ground older than you. There are animals in the sea that are older than you. There are rivers and streams and water molecules that are older than you. There are land masses that have been here 
way longer than you. And there's some land masters that were here during the time that Adam was cast out of the garden. Even from the land that even Shinar, even Babylon, even dwelt on. And those lands are still here. And it says to him, every year, and all his works serve him and are not changed. But as Yahuwah has ordained, so everything takes place. And, and see how the seas and the rivers together accomplish their work. Most people say, oh, like rain and snow come down from Shamaim, so does it a bar be that go out of my mouth? It don't retain it. Uh, does not return to him void, but it'll accomplish what it's sent it to do. It gives bread to the sower, seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. Because this is the 11 bread, it gives you matzah. But then you don't see a river. A river, when it flows, it never stops. It continually flows. And the animals come and they continually drink from it every now and then. Just so that they continue to keep having thirst. So Yahushua said, he that believes on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water that other animals and other creatures and other beings can come and drink from that flowing river that never stops. Because once it rains one time, notice how it rains one time and the river keep flowing for weeks on end. And you be like, where all that water coming from? He said, the mountain of Yahuwah is going to be established on the top of the mountains and exalted above all hills. And all people shall flow unto it, <laughs> including the animals, because they don't want to be killed by nobody anyway. Matter of fact, they want to praise Yahuwah too. They want to drink it from the crystal water in the fountain that flows every year, too, and every month. So we look at all this, we look at the knowledge and understanding, and we know that this night is a night to be much remembered. It's a night of watching, but also to be for, like he says, for remembrance. It's a car to remember Yahushua's death and suffering. But we know that his death and suffering brought us life, and to give us life is eternal life, and to walk in his righteousness. And no longer worship the host of the Shamaims, nor an animal or a peeping thing or, or in the ocean or in the sea or insectoid, to not worship the beings of the earth nor a human being, not even to bow to another servant or even another man, but to bow our mind, even as Mashah said, he was a man more bowed down than any man on the earth, for the meek shall inherit the earth. The meek shall inherit the earth.